What do we think, Montreal? Are we excited for Operation Commanding Force? I want you to carry that momentum and that excitement forward because we have now reached the point where we're about to throw you into our lower bracket final. One of these two teams that are about to step out onto the stage will book their spot in the grand final alongside W7M. Montreal, are we ready? Yeah. On a lower bracket run that is for the ages, on a mission to put their org's name back on top, ladies and gentlemen, it's G2! They just sent Astralis home earlier today, hence the mixed reaction from the crowd. But they are experienced enough, especially with that coach leading the charge at the back, to not let the noise disturb them. Ladies and gentlemen, G2. Now, we were chatting earlier with Doki. And he was telling me that there's just something fresh, there's something unique, something different about this team. And him, his roster, and their amazing head coach, who could potentially lift his third hammer, is ready to go to business. But standing in their way, and I am expecting a huge reaction here. They do not want this to be their last breath. It's oxygen! As they make their way through the smoke after a hard-fought loss to W7M yesterday. They've regrouped, they've reset, and are gunning for a rematch in the grand final tomorrow. But to get there, and you can hear what it means to the crowd here. They're at the right side of the arena, that's for sure. It's about to get loud here at the iconic Plas Bell. And to preview this lower bracket final, who is going to step into the grand final, Jackie? Who's it gonna be? Thank you so much, Ian. Who's it going to be? Who is winning the lower bracket final? Are y'all excited? Oh my gosh, my heart sings every time I hear this crowd. They are just so excited, so full of energy. Dev, we got the EU NA showdown again. Let's go. It's the last hope for North America versus the last hope for Europe. It doesn't get more iconic than this. Only one of these regions can meet Brazil in the grand final. You got a nosebleed. That's oh, how I got a nosebleed. Literally, I was so I don't know excited. If you saw he sprinted in here last second because you were just so hyped for this. Yeah, between the season reveal and then coming on to this game, I was my <laughs> nosebleed. And if I have to walk off, that's on me. But yeah, I think you know we saw what EU has already done to NA this morning. Oh, Why yeah, would it be any different it. coming into this game, Jackie? I know. I am so excited. Listen to this crowd. Oh my gosh, they are on fire. Okay, Dev. OXG. Let's start with them. Never broken the top four. Foxy's been here though before. Oh, once or twice, yeah. Foxy's <laughs> been to a six invitational. This is Fox's fifth six invitational wow. in a row. And he hasn't broken the top four since 2019. It's been a long time coming. He's played on this stage time and time again, alongside longtime teammate Vertical, who's also having his fifth invitational here. Yeah, and I think so. I think, you know, particularly for Fox and Vert, they've been looking for that success. They've always been known every time they go to an international event as a strong team, you know, when they were with reciprocity, now they're with Oxygen. It's always a matter of when, not if, these guys step up and make a final. They've got a huge chance to do that today. And Fresh, Newers is literally the best player at the tournament right now. He quite literally. Li quite literally is. Like, he's <laughs> so consistent, levels above, you know, even players, you know, like Shaiko that we've seen and Spoit. Newers is the guy. He is the man. And look at him. He is full of look absolute... <laughs>
<laughs> confidence. And he's got so many fans here in the crowd. I've seen so many signs about him. But yeah, you know, NAL 2022, stage one, finished first, rookie season, 19 years old. And it's just consistently good every time he's in the server. There's a lot of rookie players that are especially hyped up when they join the league. A lot of people named Spoit the rookie of the year when he won the Berlin Major. But there is no doubt in my mind that Newers will be able to steal that title from Spoit should he be a champion here at the Six Invitational. 19 years of age, it is unreal that this guy is at the top of his game and delivering on the biggest stage with all of these eyes watching. And we've got players where they give a lot of energy to their teammates. And Newers is one of these players as well. I, had, you know, I was lucky enough to be there in group stages and during the playoffs where it was in the hotel, it was a bit more intimate, and we could hear them talking to each other, we could listen to communications. Every time anything happened, he was hyping the hell out of his teammates as well. So he's not just the consistent frag guy, he's not just the scar guy, he's actually the hype man for his team as well. Hype man and a fragger, you gotta love that. Okay, now to G2, we gotta talk about Fabian, right? He is coming for these NA teams right now. 16-0? Yeah, um, it's got... frightening, it's a little scary. <laughs> NA just doesn't beat Fabian. Have a look at all of the teams Fabian has put in the dirt. Oh, the crowd going wild his now. seven year tenure. If you're a North American fan looking for a villain, look no further. And of course, Astralis, as of just earlier today, has been added to that kill list. This man, he might not be a player any longer, but I'm gonna be honest, that curse, that still lives well and truly, and it is breathing some oxygen right now. There were some crazy organizations in there. There's been organizations that haven't been in Siege for a while there. You know, Evil Geniuses, there's Reciprocity, which obviously is Foxay's old team as well, that Fabian is undefeated against. Like, this guy, I don't, I don't know what it is. It might just be, you know, <laughs> correlation, causation, all that, but he knows how to win against North America. Truly, and there's so many big names here. Benja, Doki, I mean, where do we start? Each of these players, they have a story. Can I start somewhere? A bit okay, personal? let's start. Where do you want to All start? Right. I know where he wants to start. All right, so Australia. there's this guy called Virtue. <laughs> oh. And he's an Aussie and he plays for G2. No Australian has ever been to a grand final That's wild. on the international stage. No six invitational, no major, no pro league finals. The best that Virtue has done with Fnatic was top four at Milan pro league finals in 2019. In 2020, with Fnatic, Virtue knocked out G2 and was immediately in conversations to be picked up. I know you can vouch for that, Jack. And here he is with G2 playing for a spot in the grand final. I think the conversation that we had in 2020 was, holy crap, we've got to get that guy. He is so good. <laughs> but yeah, Virtue, he, and I, I've said this about him a couple of times. He's an unsung hero on this team. He kind of will do anything for the team dynamic, even if that means he's not in the spotlight. There's been a lot of players that have come and gone on G2 from 2020 that feel that they need to be in the spotlight, that feel that they need to be enabled. And Jake Virtue, he's had to take a back seat and help enable those. But it's great to see him doing so well in this current team dynamic. And Fresh, both of these teams, they're balanced, they're flexible, they're versatile, right? Well, both of them can prove there's more than one way to hit a nail into the wall. You can either <laughs> hammer it or you can <laughs> screwdriver it. They approach, and I think it's both to do with the roster changes and the role changes that they've made. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, the sweater and the OXG changes, but then also the introduction of Benja on G2. Both of these teams have got so far in this tournament because they've figured out different ways to beat different teams. If I look at G2, for example, the way that they played against Wolves, I said it earlier, they played a lot of traps, they played a lot of slow, a lot of layering, but when they were going up against the Strongers, they were very in the face, very aggressive, taking gunfights. They understand the various win conditions that exist within Rainbow Six Siege and play towards them. So I'm looking forward to like a real arm wrestle in this game. Yeah, uh, honestly, I am very excited for what the chances are for this going to map three. We didn't get one earlier today, and I was pretty disappointed. Uh, I know that G2 are extremely confident. In fact, I heard one of our colleagues mention to me that he passed G2, uh, Virtue from G2 in the hallway and said, there is no way we're not winning this game. All right, well, we have some interviews with the team. So really quickly, roll the tape. Check it out. We don't really pay attention to too much unless it's group stage where we're like, maybe we shouldn't play this many maps or that. But now that we're in playoffs, we just go one by one, do our homework against the team that we're playing, and we'll see how we're in finals, I guess. The main strength in G2 is that they are very aggressive and coordinated. They work together very well, and that's pretty obvious shown that they've gone this far. My message to G2 is we'll be playing you soon, and this is for Redeemer. 
We're going to approach this weekend just like any other day. We'll be playing until we stop playing. I'm not sure about Oxygen, to be honest. As a team, I think they're pretty weak. But I would say that they have like young players in the team compared to like Foxer, for example. Like, he's really experienced, so it's like a complete 50-50. That could maybe bite them in the back. Bring it on, Oxygen. We should have picked you guys instead of Wolves and you wouldn't be here right now. Oh my goodness, I have chills. We are getting so close again. This series started. All right, you know what? Let's get into it. Let's get right to the map bands and information coming up on the screen any second now as our players get to their spots. But in the meantime, I mean, talk to me about the pressure that these teams are feeling right now. One team going home, one going to the grand final dev. There's a lot of pressure on these players, but let's also remember something that Doki mentioned. There's a lot of rookies here. Newers, he has played on a big stage before his very first debut into tier one of siege he made it to the charlotte major but it's quite a different story to be here at the six invitational with the crowd on your side and the crowd is absolutely going to be cheering for oxygen i have no doubt about that but with with that hope comes pressure yeah a pressure to deliver Map bands up, y'all. Okay, Fresh, what you thinking here? So G2 are going to get rid of their two permabands this event. That is Border and Clubhouse. They did play Clubhouse once, but they're not liking either of those maps. Interestingly for me, the big question mark in my mind is do Oxygen surrender the veto advantage that they've got? Oxygen generally had a bigger map pool, but that result yesterday they had on Theme Park was a big question mark. Will they ban it? They have banned it. That allows the map veto to hit. Now, Oxygen have picked Bank. It's a map that they like, but it's also a map that G2 love. G2 in turn have picked Skyscraper, a map that they love, but Oxygen like. And then we go through to the decider of Cafe. Now, this is a curious one, because OXG is quite a low preference for them this event, but Fox has talked about improving their map pool to the point that they've got a nine map pool. And for G2, Cafe was a permaban through stage three, and it's their number one preference this event. Mm, isn't it funny how it feels like Oxygen tend to go big or go home? We saw that yesterday in the W7M match. They defeated the Brazilians 7-0 on border. So yeah, of course, uh, G2 gonna ban that. But then they came and lost 1-7 on Theme Park. And it just goes to show how things can flip on a dime in these BO3s. For me, the big one is Bank. It's the pick from Oxygen and it is a huge gamble. This was not a convincing result so far from Oxygen during out the tournament. They have not had the greatest results on this map. 50-50 win rate. They lost to BDS 7-3 and beat Astralis 7-3. Whereas G2, they played this map a whole bunch. They've got a 3-1 and one record so far throughout the tournament, and they've beaten some huge teams. It's also been the unplayed map for G2 three times throughout the tournament. So G2, highly preference bank, and yet Oxygen pick it. I wonder if that's something to do with the fact that Wolves beat G2 quite convincingly yesterday on bank. And I think maybe Oxygen have read into that and thought, hang on, if we can play to those same win conditions, this should be a fairly similar result. G2, obviously, like we said, they've had to prep for Astralis. So they wouldn't have been able to prep that much counter analysis in terms of like Oxygen or the map bounds or anything like that. They've just got to go into this feeling warm, feeling good. So Oxygen might have an in there. And in contrast, Oxygen knew that this morning they would have quite a bit of chill time. Yep. They would watch G2 and Astralis' game and they would play whoever was the eventual winner. Not only that, they would have had all of last night to watch over that Wolves game. And I expect that the Oxygen support staff were absolutely looking at Bank from the get-go. They're saying, look, this is a strong map for G2, but we're going to counter strap. We've got the time advantage. We've got the prep. We're going to counter their Rome game. And that's what I'm hoping to see here on map one. Okay, really fast predictions, go. I'm gonna stick with G2. I'm gonna stick with G2. Uh -huh. I'll keep playing the villain for you, you all. You are the villain! You can all boo me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think G2 are in such a good run of form, and I think they've found that special balance that you get when a team is on a tournament run. Fresh the bad guy today. Okay, Dev. I feel like I won't get out of venue alive if I also go G2. And hey, the last time, Oxygen and G2 have never played, but the last time Fox A and Vert played against G2, they 7 0 them in one of the maps. No, 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 no. Back in Six Invitational. Who won the series? Who won the series? I'm not going to give you that one. All I'm going to say is this is absolutely going to all three maps, and I reckon Oxygen's got what it takes to take down G2 on bank. All right, thanks so much, gentlemen. Who wants this series to begin? I can't hear you. Oh my gosh.
much happened, Fluke. Take it away. <sighs> Thank you very much, Jackie. And yes, here we are, Happen Fluke, for the lower bracket final. Oh, exciting. There's one more spot to be given away to the grand final, and we will decide together who is going to be that grand finalist. Those 10 players on the stage will be playing their hearts out to see if they can get a shot at lifting the hammer. Will Fabian remain the worst thing to happen to NA since, well, a lot of things? Will they finally be knocked off their high horse that no one rides as gallantly as the man himself? I don't know. That's really down to G2 at this point. We open up on Bank, the start of the series. And I don't know if that came through. I don't know if it did came just through. Saw are we, are we going to be leaking it to the entire audience? There it is. Nice to XG chance. Threats of kissing each other. Yeah, definitely. That's C. Oh, there we go. Now there everyone we can go. read it. So the winner has to kiss the other team. That's how it goes, I guess. Turkey B, Nook. Yeah. That sounds about right. They're still just talking about kissing each other. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nathan, he's in the crowd. <laughs> Shout out, Nathan. Okay, band as well. Let's get one more going on for the last band to come through on the fence. Yeah, that's what I've missed. No. Valkyrie gone as well. There hasn't been a single Tachankaban. No oh, I, I, th I think everybody has learned from banning to on, on the big stage. Yeah, yeah. Locker's CCTV, and they talked about it on the desk very briefly there, is G2 can be good at this map, but they weren't recently. And that's the main thing. OXG, they've had time to look over that, to digest. And sure, OXG had two teams to potentially prepare for as well. But you're looking at it as they're very familiar with one of their opponents. They're very familiar with the interleague play against Astralis. That hasn't come together. No, it, it hasn't quite come together fully yet. I don't will not come together either. Lockers is the first side we will head to. And this side, of course, is for many, many teams, the primary side you often see. Now, there is a big difference in win rate between uh, G2's defenses here and Oxygen's. Oxygen is actually a 60% win rate on the Lockers on the bottom floor which will give plenty of opportunity for G2 to get themselves in with a good lead in here, with a good first attack, because the stronghold is not really that strong for Oxygen. Uh, it's such a vague concept, isn't it? It's the one where you sort of go, how much prep have they done? How much prep do they still have to do? And did they really do what we thought they might have done? G2. The problem here, and the problem that seems to have struck them is sometimes they get a little bit loose. They get a little bit lost in the hero plays. OXG, their run has been so solid because they have shut that down. From so many other teams, the sort of roaming routes, the way they've sashayed around the maps itself hasn't really squandered against the OXG backline and it will start up here. Newers, obviously, all eyes on and it's jumped out already. Finds the swing on Sablur, quickly picked back up there with Adamau getting a second, oh, Adamau even getting that, and Doki getting the second, and hey, we're on bank. Welcome to it. Instantly starting off very explosive here as the G2 fans are starting to come through as well. Bit of a pre-fire in here, Fox A needs to be careful. It's gonna be hunted down slightly. G2 still very active on that top floor, but the thing is, you want to get a drone out on Fox A. However, he's soulless. He's going to be able to jump out, but misses the shot. The fuse are dropped outside. Fox A running out as well, knowing he probably will have escaped with his life. But how is Fox A going to be able to get back into the site? I mean, which option is he choosing? He's chosen the worst option. That's the one that they'll have the instant lock to. They got top square, they've got the top of the balcony. However, it's a lot of time that's been taken away. The diffuser, the kit is on the far end of the world. They've got to try and get that back. They've got to focus themselves towards, oh wait, where's the site? It's on the bottom of the building. All the attention being paid to those windows, to outside, to whatever is sort of a statement. OXG saying, you're not gonna let up. You're not gonna get comfortable. 
we're going to waste so much time because time is a very precious resource on this site more than probably any other. It definitely is, but there is also the big point that G2 can leverage right now. They have a man advantage and it is only two defenders left, so you don't really need to be fully clearing everything out. Dream, however, still out on the server stairs. is going to be able to provide a bit of an issue as he's playing out there with the shotgun, but also might allow Vertical to be isolated because these hatches are opened up, the main stairs can be utilized, G2 might just collapse on Vertical and not give Dream an opportunity to try and take him down. They have the player isolated. They last knew of Dream on the top of blue. So Vertical has to get himself a little bit closer towards the duo because if they get picked off one at a time, yeah, that will probably be all that they can get themselves run in for. The drop onto the back end of the elevator. There's a bit of a rotate in the site. Doggy just saw the side of Vertical who tucks himself in 15 seconds. And a slow rotate round the back of the vault itself. They've held up the front, the corridor. There's Dream with the rotate right round onto the door. Takes care of Benjamaster. Doki, he's in the middle of two. Sees one, goes for the pistol, can't get the connection. And it's Dream. He just has to find the man getting the plant down. Virtue, can he get up? No! Way too close for comfort, though. Doki, as he's swapped over to the pistol, not quite able to connect the final shot for the clutch. And Oxygen find themselves in the lead. Next up on the block will be the CEO office. So we're going from the basement all the way to the top. G2 starts slow. Yeah, they do start slow. And they've started slow. And that could be one of the things that OXG are looking towards punishing here. The pace, the double jump out, the sort of responsive, well, you want to be in the building, we have different ideas. It's that idea, that gameplay of, you know, where do we, where do we stack people away? Where do we pull them off? And it's for people all around the world. It's the one event that everyone gets together for. As we get ourselves ready, the castle barricades are being tossed up to create a, you know, some long angles. Unfortunately, we're just having a couple of tech oh. issues. Hopefully get it sorted in just a second. It's just a prolonged shot of uh, Redeemer for now. Either way. So we're waiting until we are uh, showing you the game again. At least what we can do is tell you what is going to be happening. Yeah. It's kind of our job. So whilst we're getting that figured out, I'll just let you know that we are currently on CEO. We have the castle barricade set up for a long line of sight to the top of square that is being watched. Pressure is being set up as well from the size of G2 drones rolling through, trying to get information down. I believe the first player has just been found, but the kills haven't come through yet. We're sorry that this is a radio play right yeah, now. We've got a radio cast. I, I, promi I promise you I'm begging to find out what is going on. Either way, we're going to have uh, Oxygen at this moment dealing with Kanto, which is being opened up by G2 from the back. I believe the impact grenade just came through to just to make sure that that wall stays closed. In the meantime, uh, the pressure is coming in from the windows, though. Doki ready to toss him some candelas might mean that the site <laughs> will fall just momentarily. Yep. Uh, I guess we'll treat this as a radio for now, and hopefully something happens soon it's a it's a steady drone game you've got benji going for a pinch on the far end of square to give you a perspective two gt players are currently outside of the building windows all of the oxg players have got themselves set up around the top floor the lowest extension they're playing themselves much closer to the fight kanto has been opened from some far away pressure from blur and habana virtue's trying to beeline they've just jumped in towards the That's site the and virtue's got one double. with doki getting a double G2 have swarmed their way in. Dream gets Virtue back, but gets traded out by Alamau. So a Sweater and Vertical are all that is left of OXG. One of them is in stock. One of them is currently holding onto the top of White Stairs. They're trying to find themselves a pinch towards it. Benja is still in square doing what Benja does, which is apparently killing Sweater. Locks him out of set. And it's only Vertical left. He's trying to get back into Long Desk. He's pushed back towards the arcade cabinet. He's about to fight Benja and he loses. <laughs> Anticlimactic end to the round, you couldn't see, but at least you heard. One to one we are. G2 with a very efficient clear. You didn't see it, we did, so you just gotta take our word for it. We have paused the game, don't worry. Game is now paused. We're gonna be fixing the issue before it's we just continue. Fox A cam and Redeemer cam still. Yep. 
I think this is a good they moment have, for everybody to, to practice their chants, you know? I think you should practice some chants for Fox A. They have no idea that they're on camera right now for this size. We want to hear some OXG chants. We want to hear some GT chants. Yeah. There. Everyone give him a wave. <laughs> 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 you must be so confused right now. Oh, he has no idea. But the game itself <laughs> is paused. So there will be at least, we don't have to. Yeah. We don't have to fill too much time. Cheer his drink. <laughs> One more drink. One, One more drink. drink. One more drink. One more drink. <laughs> <laughs> I think New Year's is trying to convince him as well. <laughs> this is, he's going to watch this back later. Yeah! <laughs> so, I'm getting updates. There's going to be a black screen for 15 seconds. Everyone say bye, Fox. Actually, Fox is still on screen. Well, he's still on screen. There, there we go. It's just a quick reset before we're headed back in. Don't worry. It wouldn't be a land without just one technical issue. Nope. There's the full step. Now he can wave at everybody. Yeah, everyone wave to the camera. <laughs> there it is. So we should hopefully be back in soon. The round as far as I'm aware, will stand. So it was G2 round, was the second round. It was a take onto CEO on the top. It was a very sudden break-in, is the best way I can describe it. The Candelas came across from Doki at the same time. Alamout swung in. They won a, a couple of important fights towards Long Desk. Dream put a little bit back. Oh. Right. Just can't see Foxes. We'll see who wins. Do we, Dale? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have a couple of highlights. They want to do a, they want to do a, do wave. a wave. Oh, we're, we're going to do, do a wave. wave. We're starting at blue side. Right, blue side. Mexican wave across. Three, two, one, up. Up. Oh, no. No. <laughs> the wave was fantastic, everyone. Sadly, everybody else is, Sadly. is seeing the replays instead this of is, your perfect wave. This is round one. This is how round one broke apart. We saw this one. Hopefully, we'll get some eyes into round two because we just had a top-down view as well. We uh, we saw... I mean, technically, every player just POV is being recorded. Yeah. That was round one. It was a magic oh. time. Here's round two. As I said, budget came up. Doki broke there. They swung around the first fight. Dream on long desk. He was able to get himself out, but got picked apart in janitors. There it is. Then it was the top square. Hey, I said that. Oh, there's so many lights. Lights are coming out. Oh, we need the spider cam. There's so many lights. We're back in. We're back in the game. Well, I mean, can we request the camera of the room, please? That would be so cool right now. We'll just continue this until the big screens are back on as a radio cast. We are headed towards the open area. Again, we're going to see a Maestro, Azami, Solis, Smoke, and Castle on the board for Oxygen. Up against that is going to be Ash, Yana, Ying, Hibana, and Ace from the G2 side. First, those castle barricades are used to block out the quick entries towards that side. We are back. Where did the air horn come from? <laughs> I don't even know. Siege's collective brain cell has come together in this room, and I'm so <laughs> proud of all of us. But back into the game we go. The lower bracket final, if you've somehow forgotten. And one apiece. G2, they're able to claim the second round. And they're going to see if they can try and steady on the similar approach, but a different site. It's over on to open this time. They're trying to get that first engagement, that first lead. They hit themselves with a double strike last time, and it was pretty powerful. Fox, what can you do? That's that big question. We'll receive some pressure soon. The Keeper Barriers are going to be protecting him, but he's blinded out. 
Elamar is going to be repelling in, using another instantly to follow up so they can go for the home. The pings are coming through. A grenade right into the elevator. Is it in time? Yes, it is. Doki finds Sweater. That's the top four. Not completely clear yet. There's still another player they have to find with the name of Newers. He's receiving a bit of pressure from below from his friends to see if they can help him out vertically. Holding on and waiting for somebody to peek their way in as a Benja special, but Doki's trying to force that motion across the top. We see the replay of the play on the grenade right in, followed up with the gun skill. It's the swing back and a steady break here. They've got the open, they've got the rotate, and that's the thing you can do on this site. But now you're concerned. Are they going to push their way back up green, up blue? Well, they have the choice of both it. They do have the choice, but Doki's waiting on one of them. And as long as the Solace has just seen this drone pass, he is not aware of the fact that he might be watched. So Doki will wait in patience. He's just going to see if there's any movement coming across. See big rotation over the top happening from G2. They're getting themselves in a better position. As now the push comes through. Openings will be made as well with the Hibana Xkaras. Newers will be forced to drop back as he has been droned out. And G2 will continue their preparation. Benja, he's trying to get that angle, he's trying to get that break across the big quad wall, but nothing is being handed to him. Look at Blur on the far end though, he's crouched above stock right next to Candela's and they're waiting for the push to start to come down. Doki finding one more, screams his way down the stairs, they're going back towards the hatch. Newers, what can he do? He gets one and he gets himself a rotate out of there, he's going to look for the second fight and he finds it! A huge follow-up. The Candelas are popping off in the site itself. Newers is going to have to waste this round if he wants it to be one for his team or at least just stop the plant. No! G2 get their second. Bring themselves to 2 1. Take that advantage as well. And this is what I was personally afraid of when we did head to bank. G2, you know, they might have lost it recently, but they are still a good team on it. <laughs> Alamar harping up the crowd. <laughs> Fabian disappointed. Well, is he disappointed? It's just a bit of a smirk on his face, isn't it? <laughs> you see the grenade kill coming through? Oh, it wasn't really a grenade kill, but it would have picked it up if it wasn't the ARX first. A beautiful shot afterwards. And as G2 just cleaned up very consistently there, oh, some of the issues that we saw filthy. the previous time they were here are not here yet. G2 is looking more composed, and that might be due to the fact that they have played the earlier game today. They are warmed up. They are ready. They've had that competition already. It's always that forever question. Is you can ask any sort of team, you can ask any sort of player, and they'll have a different opinion each time of, do you want to be the team that comes in on the second game where you're heated up? You cannot have a better scrim than game one versus, well, game time. It's a different mindset. It's a different mentality. Or do you want the ability to watch to sort of get that idea of where the play is and shape it? It's every single player and every single person is different. But OXG, as I said at the start of this, one of the reasons that they've been so good this tournament is the just steady nature of the team. It's a hand that has been entirely balanced and level. They keep on finding themselves against some of the bigger opponents or whoever and saying, we're playing our game regardless of what else is going on around it. They're aware of at least one player with his Benja all the way up on the roof, so not much they can do with that information. Doki goes for the jump in, though, following his drone, the hot drone coming through. He's going to be able to pick one off. Well, not yet. Is he aware of the fact that there's a player in open area waiting around the corner? Also doesn't seem to be the case, as Fox A is hiding steadily, not making too much noise. He's, of course, on their solace, has the opportunity to spot out any of these drones coming through. And Doki might be facing three players very soon if he's not careful. I mean, it's such a dangerous game. You can see the break is coming directly onto the site itself. They have Newers watched, but Dream has Alamau locked. An important fight, and Doki has to pull back. He can't entirely swing that. His Virtue's waiting. The rotate hits the hatch. They force the play, and that's a very nice barricade. Stops the swing with Foxe getting one more on the way back. They hadn't checked for him. Benja does get the trade. But another ex unexpected loss is Taking a bit of the wind out of the sails here of G2's approach once again on a site where they're a bit too late to the punch last time. Yeah, but last time they had that man advantage they could work with. That isn't there this time around. So G2, they will have to pull out an amazing round to turn this into their own hands. Openings will be made with the x -Kairos. Quickly checking if there's anybody on the other side that wants to go a bit cheeky. 
Not the case. Cuba Barriers are going to be locking off some lines aside as well, and the only way to break those, I'm afraid, is just to stand on top of them. It's not going to be ideal. We want to get rid of the player on the service stairs. The grenade will be bounced around the corner. Don't think that will get anybody, but the second one might as they're swinging through. Oh, no, oh, they're, they're wrong wrong side! Benja just gets the lock out there against Dream. Is able to get the pick back up. Almost tragic with Blur quickly swinging around to offer some support and, I don't know, maybe getting the kit planted. A bit of a close fight. They've got the fire and the Bulletproof is watching all of this. New as he still has two impacts. They still have some danger they can do from range and Sweater still has a C4 as well. And you're looking at not much time left. How do you do this? They know exactly when you're going for the plant, the bait. You're waiting for fire to pass anyway. We just heard the C4 rip. Virch is going to have to try and drop the fight and take it. Cannot. Benja gets one. The C4 gets the lockout. And OXG find themselves two apiece. Timeout requested now by Fabian. He's going to be having a talk about what has just happened and how they should be able to approach these next two rounds to at least secure themselves a 4-2 to two split. Of course, it was uh, difficult losing those two players initially for the side of G2. You find yourself on such a big disadvantage early on. And as, as you mentioned, they still need to go downstairs. They still need to clear out the service. There's, there's so much still left to do that yeah, there was just not enough time. Hence the timeout. Slow it down just to bring it back together. I mean, it's twice in a row it's been that side. Twice in a row they've struggled breaking it across. And a 4-2 attack in half isn't too uncommon. A 3-3 split as well. It's bank. It can work well for good attack teams. There's just something that isn't quite connecting right now, and they want to make sure that they can sort of take themselves over the line. You have to remember that this is where it was opted to be brought. The fight is what OXG wanted here. Yeah. Statistically speaking, over the six invitational, Bank has been 52%. Just Virtue. And no, Virtue's an operator now. Oh, Virtue's. <laughs> but it has been 52% defense sided over all the rounds played, which means that a 3-3 split is considered good. You know, I mean, that, that's common at that point. Yep. So that's why G2 probably are aiming for that 4-2 split, just to give themselves the extra edge over that second half on their opponent's map pick, so they can just feel a little bit more comfortable going into that second half. By the way, we are back to the round that you have not seen before. Pretty similar lineup that is being brought, a pretty similar kind of setup that is being shown here from Oxygen. And then that big question will become, what are they going to do to make sure that G2 is not going to be able to go for as clean as a take as they were able to find before? Because back then it started off with Virtue sneaking through the lobby, up the spiral stairs, taking that first kill. From there on, they just exploded over them. And Oxygen had nothing left to say. We move on and we move back in now to the post. Team talk conversation. This rest of the run will be here in G2. I pointed it out. They sometimes start a bit cautious, a bit slow. There's a slightly different approach. We can almost use comparisons to the round that unfortunately was lost to the effects of time. And you weren't able to see it. Slightly different approach here. More attention is being paid slightly further towards the lobby. There's still a couple of players on the windows, but they want to take Newers out first. They want to try and drive the fight instead of going directly onto the windows and breaking themselves in onto the site itself. They knew that that was probably not going to work twice, Fox, eh? It's close to the fire, has the catch on at least a grenade. They seem to have some idea the C4 won't get anybody, though. It has turned into the hottest property around. Always need to be a bit careful of those uh, grenades coming through. Luckily, there is those magnets as utility. Fox runs across. Might be eyeing up for a run out here. Two players on that window. Stun is going to get caught by the Magnet as well, which means you do not actually get the proximity. You don't know if someone is going to be close. Foxy, of course, did get stun, but tosses out a second Magnet, which is active already, and that means there's still two protecting him. Start of the pressure, the break, and there's Foxy suffering the double impact, but the survival is the worrying bit. They have the ping on the player and the impression that they're still there. There's Benja. The nade game, he has connected so well. Vert, what are you going to do with the first fight? Is maybe on the top there. They know that you're there, though. And that means the jump out cannot come, and you can't even escape Benja. Gets his second for the round. The player who, in a series earlier on today, when you needed him the most, got more kills than how old he is. And he's starting to see if he can do even better than that. Newers, he's under a big bout of pressure here, trying to keep himself together. The sawing and the rotates coming around underneath from Sweater. 
He took out one that was up on the rappel to the Yingon as well. A crucial factor for an execute. But Benja's coming around the corner as Newers finds one more. Sweater might be coming up in the back of him. So they need to be very careful now. He's going to find himself kind of stuck in between as Dream strikes him down. Leaves G2 in a 2v3. Even though they had the advantage, Blur strikes back. Comes up on the main stairs. Hopes to find one more. Spraying a lot through the wall, but won't quite connect. Blur and Virtue, the support line structure that has really started to turn up for G2 these past couple of days. They are all that's left is trying to see if they can get this round, but look at the time. Only 20 seconds left on the clock. And a solace against them, so if a plan goes through, you need to be very certain of the fact you can get it down. I mean, can they be? There's not really anywhere that's safe from this point. The Solace, hello, how you doing? Not very oh. well. Virtue all that's left. He cannot get to the kit. He can't get the fight in Oxygen. They get a third round. They retake the lead after having it lost to them in round two. They got their three rounds. They got their 50%. Now they need to try and get one more. To achieve the same that was able to be achieved, or wanted to be achieved by G2. It's yep. unfortunate, I think, here from it G2. Is. They're, being, the they're being punished from time to place, it's after the timeout as well. It's man advantages they're throwing away. It should be a little bit more controlled. It should be a little bit more coordinated. Obviously, a Solus going under in a two versus two is a nightmare with 10 seconds left. Not even Pengu knows how to get that out. <laughs> yeah, I think he needs to update his boot camp in that matter. <laughs> how do you deal with a Solus? There's 20 seconds on the clock. We're headed back towards the open area, back towards that first floor. See if there's any big changes. Well, we do not see a castle this time. It is going to be an Azami played. It's going to be the architect of the team to uh, make sure they slow them down just enough. Now, this was also a very clean and consistent take from G2, where they managed to find the first pick and then just completely snowball the rest of the defense. And we've just seen Oxygen counter that on CEO. Can they do it again on that different site for the 4 2 split? G2, uh, you know, 4-2, we talked about it. We talk about 3-3 and we talk about how that's still kind of standard. You don't want to be on the back foot going in on the opposite end. It wasn't, you know, the sort of best performance from them. There's no two ways about that. Last time they were on bank, there's weaknesses that are being exploited here by OXG. But G2 have obviously come in with a sharpness. It's just not quite getting them over the line. Fox A gets out of there before the pressure gets a little bit too hot. It was across all the windows. The late last second keeper barricade is just going to draw more time away from them. It's been a long day for G2 and keeper barricades just make it that little bit longer. Yeah, it's utility. You're going to have to either play around or destroy. Or just take out the Izami. Now, Newers did take a little bit of damage, but nothing lethal. A good way to deal with any future keeper barriers. Kanto is uh, going to be receiving a little bit of pressure, not the player, but the spot as the wall gets opened up. It's going to give a clean line of sight all the way through, which is going to be making it so much harder for players to rotate if they are up on that top floor. Little do they know, though, no one currently is on the side of Oxygen. But they are watching directly underneath. You have the Solace, you have some problem causes, you have some impressions of if we enter, we're going to maybe make a hastier exit that we planned. So. It's come up this, a big rotate, the break round onto the top of square. They've come up lobby and come up against Fox A, who's been able to take pretty clean and easy take against Benja. Knocked them off the board, Doki. Does he expect the swing? Oh, not as much as Newers does. Newers knew he was there, took him out. Now a two-man advantage for Oxygen. Which they just need to leverage out, and the best way to do that is to play time. They don't need to swing, but Alamo does, finds vertical. Brings it back. At least one more. They still don't really have an opening. They've created some verticality, but that's literally about it. They need to open up the quad wall as well to basically force these players into more uncomfortable positions, which are more easily dealt with. I believe he's heading downstairs just to see if there's any rotations through those hatches as all well, Mute Gemmers stop Blur from opening up with the Xkyros. And there is one, and he finds them! I mean, you was taking that with the impression that there's only 30 seconds left, but to be honest, G2's attention to the site in the last second moment hasn't always been so succinct. Fox A, he's holding one angle. Dream's gonna try and swing it with a shotgun. Oh. Gets one unpunished. They didn't have the trade out from the back end. 
He saw the man go down. He knows they might be able to get them back up, but it's precious time once again being removed from G2. The walls are locked. They've just got to swing this and try and push their way into sight. There's an aggressive fight on the door. It's a triple kill, but unless you get that diffuser planted, you're going to lose the round. He's holding on to it, and it's an oxygen round. Gives us the 2-4 split. Puts them in a really good position here for the remainder of this game. All they need now is three rounds to find themselves with that first map. There's the, there's the cosplayer with the work. Honestly, I was going to say that that pulse, cardiac sensor, Unbelievable. works. Like, yeah. Insane. The one that you all just saw on stream, it, it actually works. Siege cosplayers terrify me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OXG, solid half. They played the time game. They obviously looked at what G2 was struggling with. That's what they were putting pressure on. You saw it in their motions. They only made them when they knew it was going to be something that slowed G2 down. They cut them back a little bit. They made things problematic just before G2 were ready to rock and roll into the site. And you lose a body, you lose two. If it's still part of your plan of making sure they lose a minute and a half or two, then that's the plan. And it's. A round win is a round win, regardless of how close or scrappy or the KD of it. Now I'm going to be uh, giving G2 fans some good news here. Over the entire tournament so far, they've only lost their defense on Armory and Lookers once. The entire tournament. They've won it every single other time they played it. So that is why they're starting off here. They want to be making sure they at least pick up those two rounds. The Stokey almost gets sprayed down. I don't think they actually knew he was there. It might just be actually to open up the door, but he caught a stray or two. He's going to try and keep himself slightly further away from the danger as we get OXG's approach. And you can talk about how good G2 are on defense at the minute, but they've got to make sure they don't get pulled apart. As I said, consistency is key, and that's OXG's biggest key for many, many locks. Doki. You can see he's trying to find a fight. He wants to be the start and the first point, but it's not being offered to him. At this point, he has to pull himself away, has to move, has to keep looking for empty spaces, because if it comes suddenly, then he's in a dangerous position. There's a cardiac sensor, there's the C4, there's the kill. Picked up the buck, that's going to be removing a lot of the vertical opportunities. Of course, luckily, uh, buck, not the most important operator for his oh. side, oh. as goes aggressive and finds Stokey. I mean, he just kept on leaning in. You could see Doki sprayed it a little bit earlier. Benja's not going to give up the territory immediately. He wants them to have to keep checking it and rechecking it. But look at the pressure around gold. They go into the back end. They've got lobby. They're getting that droned out. Benja sort of had the big reveal. A minute 30. And OXG aren't too interested in square, but Alamau is interested in vert. And that might change things. Alamau off on an adventure on the top floor, finds another. Benja takes a bit of damage in the site itself and with the drop right onto the back of the gold. Virtue. 3-4. And G2, they continue their trend of winning Armory Lockers. Of course, as mentioned, only lost it once this entire tournament so far. And that's going to be giving them potentially two rounds, but that means they need to find at least two other ones on different sides to find themselves at six and an opportunity for OT. And Oxygen, you know, that they feel confident. This is why they chose this map. They know they can take G2 here. I mean, you got to have confidence. You know that it's a team that's dispatched pretty much every NA team. Yeah. They've been up and down at points, but against North America, very up. And up and up and up. Yeah. And that's a terrifying stat. That's a statistic because you, you always have how a region plays. You have the sort of writing on the bylines of this is what we like to do. And yeah, teams have differences and there are changes, no doubt. You cannot compare a team so succinctly in the DNA of it. But still, there's mentalities. There's a core of a region. And if somebody's got that sort of pulled apart, it becomes a bit more of a challenge to break it intrinsically. Objective All right, here we go for the next site on G2's defense. Are yep. they going to go aggressive? Maybe. Are they going to slow it down? We don't know. I mean, there is going to be an Oryx on the board, so jumping up and down these hatches might be a name of a play they are going for. 
But it's the first RC, Retiro comes in, that is going to be taking care, no, not actually of the Keeper Barricade on the door, but the one right behind it, because that table is a menace to play against. It's also a very smart call. The one closest to you expect to be able to get, because, well, they're not expecting it. And that's why Doki then lent in and sort of said, well, I'm going to be expecting the next one. It's a game of expectations. You try and drive the first, the deepest. Doki, he was waiting, oh. but looked the wrong way, and... He'll be kicking him for missing that one. That is almost every single one utilized. Yeah, one more RC One more is left, unless it happens sneakily. But look at this. Talking of newers, he was hoping to bait the fight in the swing, hoping Doki was still sitting around. So no. And. Oh, 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 oh. That's a little bit of a tight timing there, Doki. There is a player around the top of square, I believe, though, that might try and cause some damage. No? has already fell back. Doesn't want to stick around. Yeah, he's going to go uh, out. Off. Yeah. He's going to find a different way into the building. He's aware of the fact that he's been spotted and he might be hunted and doesn't really feel like that is the best place to stay as the next RC Retiro will come through. Now is a decision to make. Either the one closing the door or the one that's right behind on the B-bomb chassis. Again, three for three. Takes that out. But that means that this one stays up for now. How are you going to deal with that? Oh, Bench is going to deal with it. Swings his way around inside Archives, gets the take on the box, and he hasn't been intently challenged. They obviously pulled off, and as I said, there was the player up there, but they moved themselves all the way around to push from the opposite end, and there's a rotate happening on the top floor of G2 itself. They still have so much control. And you can see OXG, they're kind of curious about how to try and take it. The breakthrough, Foxy's watching the rotate, so nobody just hops down behind, and they're going to trust you as, as you probably would to fight the engagement themselves, but they're still a bit cautious. Probably even more so now, Doki. Finds the head of vertical, Benja. He's waiting. And he's taking. Newers is off the board. Virtue gets caught in the drop down. Well watched by Fox, but it gives away the game of where he is and, well, he might be alone. If they know where Sweater is, they might be able to close them down. 40 seconds on the clock. Oxygen, they find themselves in a disadvantage. And now all they need to do is try and lock out one or two more players to have themselves an even fighting chance on the actual site. Fox is going to be doing that buff. He's going to be leaning in and finds Benja. Brings it back to that 3v2. That's the first, but there's only 20 seconds left on the clock now. They need to find themselves a way in to get that plant out. That's a free spot. Oh. That's a free kill. Blur taken out on the site. Disaster might be striking here. They're going to pre-fire and swing. Just sees the side of the head. The smoke forces. Doki is able to get one in a trade out. One more G2 player standing, but it was a two versus four. They got dangerously close. <laughs> they got way too close there. Two kills. Well, Benja le leaned into the fight as well, but wasn't able to connect. It's just that that free spot on the side is, is just... Those are the kind of things you don't need in a situation where it could suddenly turn back around. By the way, a tech timeout from Oxygen in the meantime. Yep. Time to dock. Time to try and put the wheels back in motion in the right direction. They had themselves, obviously, the 40 split, but it was... Yeah, a little bit later, but roughly around the same time with the same amount of losses of rounds when G2 did their own timeout. Yep, two rounds lost in a row. Time to call that timeout. It's about to be ending. We're about to get back underway. Oxygen have had their opportunity to... Cool hammer. It's a, it's a cool hammer. You, you know the nickname? The, the, the game name? For the award? Oh, for no, the no. trophy for, or for, for the, the actual The hammer? actual hammer. Yeah, sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in. We'll be back in. With the next round in just a moment. As the timeout, I believe, has now ended. And we'll find ourselves heading up to CEO now. After a timeout, after you sort of get your heads back in the game, you're moving towards what is technically a tertiary site. You've got to look at what we've had, lockers open. OXG putting it there is saying, this is the one that we have to win. Because if this one slips away, the half slips away. Yeah. Numerically, mathematically, spiritually. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say spiritually. Well, what would you say? <laughs> what I do know is that G2's only played this site once before throughout the entire tournament. They have won it, but that does mean there's not a lot to go on. Are they going to go for a completely different hold? Are they going to be playing this in a different kind of manner? How have you been able to prepare for this? Now, luckily, of course, it is CEO. It is very normal sites to go through, normal attacks. Like, people will have practiced this, and that's what Oxygen is going to be banking on here as well. OXG. Pressure's on, and pressure will start towards the windows. They've 
prepping the knockdown on the castle. They're hoping that it's something where they'll go in, assuming it's entirely safe. Alamau will say, surprise, punch that out and shoot them in the face. It's just a different way of approaching it. It's a different sort of route through. I love the Sam cams of Zero. Obviously, they've got the buff that was put in the video slightly earlier on. Yeah, I was going to say, I love the little rework coming through. Makes it a little bit more reliable as the first A1D pops through. It's going to be a little bit of information given Doki where the fact that someone could be above him now. Needs to be careful that no one just suddenly drops down that skylight and takes him down because we have seen quite some kills like that this tournament. Dream eyes on the windows. Two minutes, plenty of time here for OXG. And well, actually, they didn't want to waste any of it. Vertical hops his way into CEO and up onto the table. Suffers a bit of damage from the side and the smoke makes things awkward. G2, they had an awareness and they're doing everything to hold him back. But hello, that's my kill, Vertical. Cleans out Janitors, takes Long Desk and angles towards the next fight. Cannot get further than that though. They're still swinging into the site itself. Alamau, he's watching and spraying over the top of Dream with a kit. Dream is stuck in a very dangerous situation. He needs a sliver of support to cover the sliver of health that he's otherwise sitting with. Sweater, round on the back. New is getting Alamau and this could be the lifeline. There is Sweater, hitting Janitors, almost hits. There it is. Suddenly it's just down a virtue. It was a bit of a stalemate, and now there's only one mate left, and he's able to get one down. Three more players. One's hopped out the windows to make this very awkward. One army man crawling behind the desk. You assume that stream with the little amount of health that he had. He's just going to sort of play the time aspect. There's the lockdown, though. OXG get the round. Brings them one closer to that six mark, that magical six which at least secures you for overtime. And I said it before, like they've played it once, G2, they've won it back then, so how are you gonna be playing against this? There's just little to go on. The answer, just jump in and run through the side. <laughs> Try to I mean, it was skill. sudden. It is very sudden. They did not expect that to happen. And of course, it was a bit of a scrappy fire, but Oxygen, with the panic that G2 had and having to over-rotate, were able to punish those players coming back to the site and found success. We're headed back towards the basement, everybody. Bleep. We're getting a little bit of bleep. That's a bit of a bleep. We're getting some a player, bit of player comms, comms again. again. Oh, I missed them. All right, back down, as he said, towards lockers, towards a site that is entirely fallen into the favor of the defenders throughout this game. And Taka has not been able to breach it. We saw a little bit more of an actual fight on the site, I would say, in the most recent round from OXG than G2's first, but G2's second was a bit of a step up. They just sort of suffered time, and if that's the conversation, I mean, obviously, in the previous round, time became less of a factor and more of a let's be inside and fight. It's kind of a G2 way, right, as well. It's like, just, just fight. And whilst at the same time, they are very structural with their falling backs, you can almost, like, write down an entire time schedule on how the G2 roamers will play on this side and when they will fall back. Normally it's somewhere between 145 and 120 left on the clock. That's when they start headed towards that first floor. Something needs to be like particularly happening for that not to happen. It's gonna be quite some pinks to come through. Luckily for them, not the actual player inside of Tellers. Because it could have been an instant kill to come through on a G2 player there. I mean, it likely oh, would have oh. been. Do they know about Alamau? Oh, Fox Day's able to win one out, but he exits oh, the second as well. Fox Day somehow connected with Alamau there. Benja, he's able to bite back. Hopes Fox Day tries to finish the swing into him, but instead it's on the window. There's the replay of the second kill that came through, and oh, Alamau's going to be kicking himself for not getting that. The, Drones roll on by, put the pressure onto Benja, who's otherwise just sort of popping up and trying to pop them right back down. Look at the time though, look at the body advantage. I talked at the start of this about G2 suffering. Can OXG prove otherwise? That's it, hatch gets opened up. It's gonna be uh, allowing some extra flexibility here for Oxygen, especially with the amount of time left. I think all Benja's gonna be doing here is just stick around and try and go for one more fight before he drops towards the site. And soon Oxygen will be aware. There's some pings coming through. They have an ID. They're like, I cannot quite see that corner, but I hear something, and now the drop comes through. C4 gets ripped, ready to be tossed in. Ready on bleepers, ready on C4. Nobody's ready to catch it. He moves past the next hatch, just as that gets broken open, too. Trying to find somewhere that's up, maybe. safe. And yeah, there's always the chance of backup, but in the four versus three, you've always got to be super cautious. 
Pressure coming down towards the server stairs. Top of square is getting opened up as well. They're afraid that someone might still be here. Benja goes aggressive. Oh, actually gets a spot. He's going to get five to kill. No, no he does no. not. He was trying his hardest, but it was such a dangerous position. You can see the pressure and control over the top of the hatch. They want to see if they can get the kick down. But with the smoke and the fire and everything burning around them, what do you do? You have to wait or you have to try and force the fight elsewhere. A huge risky play, but Virtue finds new as in the meantime. Fox is looking for revenge. It's not being gifted to him. Another canister pops, Virtue. He knows he's buying himself a bit more time and there's a rotate, there's a change of ideas. They cannot just go for the plant on the default. They're gonna have to try and drive themselves from either the hatch above the site or maybe even a full rotate. It's the site hatch. They're gonna get themselves right next to the pillar. They might even try and go a bit deeper. They're not able to win it out. The two versus two, the two versus one. Virtue gets the last. And G2 pull themselves back level. Again, they've only lost it once in the entire tournament, but this came very close to becoming his second one. <laughs> Lonnie Lightning. <laughs> and that brings us to 5-5 and round 11, where one of these two teams is going to be finding themselves on the map point. That was filth from Fox. I mean, it, it's sort of back and forth. You're seeing these, like, almost statements of power. These statements of, I'm not going to hand over the territory. They have almost learned a lesson, as cautious as I am to say it, because it's early in the series, but it's real late in the tournament of when to hold and when to fold. And it's always been the toughest thing for G2. It has been. <laughs> they have a bit of a, you know, it's not quite the m, &M reputation of losing XC1s all the time, but G2 does give away the, uh, the uh, you know, number advantage every now and then and lose the round on the back of it. And that's something that I'm pretty sure Fabian has been hammering down on for the majority of uh, his time here that they just need to slow it down because there is that saying, sometimes all you need to do is just nothing. Or oh, there's 20 down. seconds left on the... Oh, there's 20 oh, no, seconds that's left the, other. the clock and what do you do, right? That's the other saying. Yes. One of these two teams will find themselves on map point and if it's OXG, well, it's their map. They'll probably be very happy with that in G2. Less so. However, obviously, their fight from earlier on in the day was one where they almost lost it, pulled it back, and pulled it back. Virtue. He's waiting to see if he can get the first line of the approach. He's hot droned against, but no one gets the kill. Gives himself a little bit more width than Wiggle. Oh, and gets takes it. On the lockdown there, onto Suede. He's playing against the time, playing with the motion. It doesn't really care if you get pinged in the words of some of the teams and coaches, it is just a ping. But on the back of these ones, a oh. lot of guns watching. Ready for that jump out. Virtue just needs to stay patient, but these drones are giving away the spots. You can see the shadow on the desk. He's running past there with a Ramadash. Oh, oh, oh. Gets away with his life. He's gonna be joining the rest of G2 now. On a bit of a better hold now. They have that advantage of long range engagements. Newers is not gonna be able to do any damage. Instantly gets pressured down from Tellers down below. Impact as well. So he just has to get out. You, can, you cannot stay there. Rotating with oxygen. Over towards the top of Box. Alamau is holding firm behind the paper, which probably isn't the best thing to defend against the bullet. But as long as they don't have the intel, he's there. Oh, wait. They have the intel, he's there. He has to pop himself for smoke. He's gonna buy himself a little bit of time in wiggle room. They're stacking up and drawing focus for Virtue. And there's so much movement in the Oryx on this map. Now the five versus three. G2 have lost it before. This time, are they able to eke out one more kill? There's a C4 underneath vertical. It doesn't quite get the full bite. Virtue can take the drop if he wants to. He's waiting before oh. another trap laid. Fox A, perfect combination there of Oryx G. Yeah, they knew he had to come down, or otherwise it was going to be a vertical free fire. So they would have had that kill either way. And that just puts it back one in favor to Oxygen, but still the disadvantage to go with. 45 seconds, and how much have they actually prepared this side is always that question. Because soon they will have to go for an execute, and there is some hatches that have been opened up, but it's always a bit of awkwardness dropping through them. And so Fox A is going to be trying to cut the pie as there is the Keeper Barriers on its way. It's going to use the Breaching Charge to get rid of it. Just to provide himself some more width as there's 25 seconds left. That's it. You put the fear in. You make them think you might swing one way. There's otherwise the remaining players putting pressure from above. But as we said, there's not a lot of time. And it's a very difficult one to go for the stock drop hatch plant. 
And that's what they're entirely stacking behind. They need Fox to find something on the back end, but instead they just lose on the front. Two players down. It's only Fox they left of the round itself, but even in a four versus one, G2. They're not going to throw that one away. They are sitting on map point for the third time today. This time, the first of the series. All right, one more round coming through. Can they get it? Can they convert it for a third time to a map win against their name? It was a good trap on Virtue. It's just a shame that so much damage already had been done to Oxygen. And all they really had was the hatches to drop through as the rest had been barricaded off with the Kibas. Now we're headed back towards that top floor to CEO. And the last time we were here, we had Oxygen put up the pace. Repel in, run across, get that first kill, make G2 panic, and punish them as they rotated in. Will you be ready for this this time? You would hope they are. They gotta be, but the 4-2 half is in the most unknown half, and if there's only gonna be one site that falls from both teams, that's what OXG's gotta build behind. We're still far away from this map potentially being over down to OXG now before they find themselves on G2 Skyscraper, a map that they very much enjoyed playing throughout this tournament, or potentially a cafe. We'll find out if two or three maps is what we need, but first we need to decide on this one. Bench out on the road needs to be careful as Oxygen is getting quite close. He's going down below. Doesn't worry too much about it for now. The rest of G2 also just set up around that top floor. This time, more bodies able to strike instantly if a quick push is what the plan is going to be for Oxygen. Neo is on the hunt down below. Benja seems to be somewhat aware of the fact that there might be someone coming up from this staircase. A bomb has been located. It is always that risky swing, that rotate on the door. We've seen Newers take these many, many times before. But Benj has actually drifted away. If he's gone unchecked, that could buy him a bit more safety, but the drone game has been pretty good, pretty succinct. They obviously have utilized things like the Sam cams this time. Instead, they want a bit more of a direct force, and G2 can only wait. Pressure on the windows. Not the pacey swing in they did last time, but there's still plenty of time left in the round. You've got to make sure you remove Benja first of all. Alamau, he's watching, and Newers is going to do just what I said before the fight. Is oh. it his, though? Benja! He's able to take the pinpoint precision needed, and that is a risk because now you know Benj is underneath, and now you know they've got a C4 there too. And that's the pressure of Oxygen below gone as well. No grenades going up, and instead, indeed, as you mentioned, you cannot just go for a blind plan because that Nitro Cell will come for you. Sweater is looking to lock that down at least somewhat from the top of square. Benj is leaning back into the archives. Gonna see if he can go for another fight. Sees that drone. Knows he's getting hunted and gets shut down. Deals a little bit of damage as another trade oh. comes through on the opposite side of the map. Very important there, OXG. They keep it balanced with the one that they got back. They made sure they were just one more step in, but they gotta get that diffuser over. They gotta try and put the pressure on the site itself. If it gets caught out on the window and drops to the floor, that is a very, very, very long fall. Sweater. He's holding on to the back end of Square for now. Doki, he's dropped out. Pinpoint from vertical. He had a bit of a slow start to the map, but if he strikes now, they're the impact kills you need. There's another that almost wants the engagement, but once again, G2, from being a body up, have slowly drifted to being one down. It's pressure coming all the way from stock. They're clearing themselves towards the plant. They know the objective, and Blur's gonna see if he's got his own objective. Stop it connecting. The first fight is his. He doesn't know about stock to his right, and that's the quick pick back up. And Alamau, all that's left inside the site. The two versus one. The C4 cannot stop the catch. They're spraying too high. They're fighting too low. And OXG got that one more round, and we potentially have three. Best of three in rounds now. We needed at least 12. G2 will be starting off on the attack. And the 4-2 splits have been prevalent for the defense, which means that Oxygen do theoretically have the advantage for this map as they're headed down towards the lockers first. It's always 
these moments with G2. You can never really truly escape OT fights with these teams. And that's the steady on. Will the fact that we're leading in on defense, as we said before, Lockers, this site has been flawless from defenders. Nobody this game has been able to crack this. No one's been able to put the pressure on. There were moments where you think G2 should have, but that man advantage thing is perpetually a problem for them. And they just can't seem to solve. If they were able to solve that, it would be probably like one of the most scary teams in the world, just like w I mean, m I mean, they are already top three. I was going to say, scary, let's be fair. That would make them even I mean, more they're scary. They're rubbish. They're oh, they're, 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 you know, <laughs> that's not at all it. App. But that would just make them a lot more scary if they couldn't like convert every single opening kill. That, that, you don't want to play against that. Now they at least bleed. <laughs> they do. But both these teams. Both these teams want to fight W7M in the final. And they want to make them bleed probably more than anything. Fox A is close to the fire. And he's in a position here where the spray is coming down from underneath. They don't expect the jump out. They don't expect the watch currently. It's a Solus. And what the Solus might do is see if anybody's on their cams on the window before they make the movement. But they're not entirely sure about it. They think there might be some pressure coming from elsewhere. They know it is. They see the drone, and instead of risking it, why? It was successful in the very first round. But this is the very, maybe last. Yeah, in the very first round, we had that two jump out gameplay from Oxygen. But at the end, G2 came out with a numbers advantage, which they weren't able to convert. Now they need to try and find it again. Doki descending the main stairs, or at least he thought of doing that, but first he's gonna send his drone in. And just preparing himself, instantly dropping through. They're wanting to get some pace down on the actual side. A minute 40 left on the clock. It is plenty of time to do your preparative work. That's exactly what they are doing here, creating rotations as well. And I believe some Xkairos just got shot out there. Yeah. It's soft. They were playing against the Xkairos. I mean, you shouldn't truly run out, especially when you've got Blur on the roll of the Thermite as well. Slightly different approach here from G2 in that they're going to focus themselves onto blue first. Seemingly, the stuns, the bounce, the grenades, you know you've got to move away from the shield. Can they get the catch on the back end? But Fox A, he wanted to watch, and he's oh, caught in the fire! G2 swing their way through, and they've pincered the person in blue. They're able to get the swing and the take. They take a lot of damage in the meantime. They were watching the hatch as well above the site, making sure that nobody rotated around to give some support. It's locked in, oh. and they're locked out! The Aussie gets a triple, but he's kind of hungry oh, for no. more! Seabag in the bulletproof camera there. He's letting them know we're coming for you, Oxygen. This might be the last time you win the lockers. But they're ready for it. There's still C4s. There's still fire on the board and 40 seconds left away. His grenades are being rolled in to get rid of that utility. Sweater is being pushed back as C4 gets tossed out. Will it find anybody? No, as it gets destroyed. Smokes are blocking lines aside. He needs to go aggressive now. He needs to go for the swing to stop them from trying to get that plant down. They're holding so patiently, but you can't really be patient when they're entirely swimming around you. They don't want to give themselves to the fight, but the fight comes to them. It has to be an ace for Vertical. They're going for the plot, but they get the man. G2, once again, one step and one round away from taking map number one. And I can bet they are going to lockers themselves as well. Of course, they got close there before. But again, it is just a side that is almost so perfect for them. But what a take this was, by the way. Just, just first of all, that fire, putting the opponents on fire themselves and locking off those two players. That was a very hard advantage to throw away for G2, and they did not. They, I mean... If they threw that away, we would have a bigger problem. When they play like they're a unit, when they play like they're a team and not five individual players, they are one of the scariest teams in this game. We talked about it yesterday, watching them with Dez, and you see it from them that if they're sort of corralled and shepherded towards an idea, G2's collective IQ gets them over the line. Unfortunately, it takes a lot to keep them on the rails at times. Chance. Arena. Fill the arena. But OXG, I mean, they were one round away before. They're more than able, more than likely to pull this one back. Lockers has had close moments for them. There's been moments of growth. There's been moments where they're getting more and more dangerous, more and more interested in the angles, the ideas. 
that's it. They were close before, but then G2 able to turn it back around. If the entry kill is this time being preserved, though, and G2 managed to play it slow and take as much time as they can. Oxygen is going to have a way harder time than they did in the previous round when they were trying to attack the lockers. Now, still some entry denial devices are being set up. A lot of the hatches actually have been opened up by G2. Might be wondering as of why, but that could be just to send C4s back up or just to have rotations out as Virtue gets the first on the dirt tunnel. G2 with a start. And it is a big player from the last few rounds gone. OXG, they're going on a bit of a direct hunt. We know how many times G2 has extended up here to open. They have players above the hatch. This time, they've locked themselves away. They've pulled themselves further back. Whether the hatcher is open or not, it means they're not giving them the fight this early. They've opted to instead say, look, we know this hasn't gone super great, just good enough, and we want this to be a final round. We can work. There's a bit of a hold. Benja. Well, he's not even going to get the fight yet. Yeah, the barbed wire got punched. They knew someone was coming from there. So what you do, you hold the angle. You get the smoke in just by yourself some time because they don't want to stick around on servers. They don't want to have the same happen against them as what they did to Oxygen. And as Oxygen is getting themselves together near servers, they are going to be opening up that wall. They're going to be trying to get rid of as much of the fire that could possibly be there. And, of course, those Surya laser gates because they need to get that plan down at some point. There's just so much utility still left. Three <laughs> C4s. There is going to be smoke canisters left. You need to go for kills and execute on the default A side. Is not going to stick. That's what they're trying to work out right now, but they're at least getting a lot of the work done earlier on Dream. He waits. He wants to plant, and he's got to try and bait some of this. There's the last canister gone. The fire pops its way around. Alamau with the pulse will have the heartbeat read on anything that is trying to matter. So Fox A is going to matter oh. on the back end. Benja blows him out of the vault this time. There's Sweater getting one back, and Dream swings wide, removes the gold hold. They lose the pulse. They lose a C4 not used, but Blur. Wins one on the back end with a heavy hitting DMR. It's a rotate over the top. They've got the split push. Newers has to go massive as he has throughout this whole tournament. It's not over until it's done. Newers on the plant. G2 swarms. There's one. He goes back on the plant. There's only a pocket full of seconds. He looks for the next fight. The C4 gets removed. We cannot get it. G2 do. And map one is theirs. They will again take lockers. It was indeed a hard-fought victory. And a lot of relief on their faces as well. You see it on the cameras. That's one. That's one lag into the grand finals. That's one step closer to the hammer. And Fabian, he's thirsty for his third hammer, but he's the biggest tool of all. We'll see, OXG, can they try and bring themselves back? They have been so good throughout this tournament. They were obviously runners across the upper bracket. This is their first game down here. We'll throw to a quick break before we're back with our analysts. I'm Nicholas Martin, but you know me as Pingu. I'm a two-time Rainbow Six Siege World Champion and former top Rainbow Six Siege player in Pro League. Welcome to my Siege Ranked Bootcamp. We're talking 20 seconds left on the clock. You got the diffuser in hand. What do you do? Play the way that you're comfortable with because you have confidence when you're in this position. That is when you're gonna be at your very best. Good luck.
give a little shout out to the cosplayers behind me. They gave us these little treats and that was really sweet. So y'all are amazing. And talking about amazing, how is that series, everyone? I love this crowd. I really cannot get enough. But okay, let's get right into this. And Dev, we got to talk about this map pick, right? It was definitely a strategic choice here, undoubtedly. Yeah, uh, look, I always thought it was going to be a risk for OXG going to bank. We talked about it in the pre-match. Oxygen know that G2 are very good at this map and have won it three times so far in the tournament. But Oxygen, they clearly went in with some counter strats uh, in mind. And we did have a nice couple of hot tricks and ideas to try and get an advantage in the first round. Fox are using Solus to do some jump outs, the Flores to clear some Azami kitchen setups that they clearly already knew about, and Zero Cams to cover roams and flanks. And yet, what do we still see happening? Successful roams and flanks from G2, successful power positions established by things like the Azamis from G2, and consistently opening kills traded back. I think when I was in teams, it was always a very dangerous game that you played when you picked a team's good, like a good map for a team into them with a specific counter strat in mind because it has to work. If it doesn't, you don't really have any other option, basically. Now, obviously, for OXG, it did. They got it to overtime, but for a couple of rounds going the other, other, you know, a different way, that's an OXG map. But what I will say is it was a risk. It was a calculated risk, but ultimately it was a risk that did not pay off by picking into bank. Fresh, I gotta be real, G2 was slow on attack. That hurt them. Oxygen was ready for them. Yeah, I think so, and I think this was part of the counter analysis. If you look at the, the rounds that OXG won, particularly rounds four, five, and six, where they were playing the win condition to try and bait G2 into the plan and then playing, you know, we saw the Solus from below, we saw the C4s on the lockers, and on the open area, we saw G2 still two people alive when the round had ended. I think OXG had a really good plan for their defense. It was just their attacks that came a little bit unstuck. They themselves then became slow, very, very slow in a lot of the rounds of G2 were just waiting for them. The rounds that they did go fast in and they brought the pace up, they actually caught G2 off. So, you know, it was a real mixed bag of tricks from our history. And if you want to talk about the rounds being slow, there's actually three rounds in that game of the 14 that we played that ended on the timer, which is actually really yeah. uncommon. It Usually there's something going wrong. Usually there's a plant denial or something akin to that that's happening if that's what's gone wrong. And I think it really leaned into the play style of these teams. Both of them had this get aggressive early and defensive late mentality. So in early round, you've got these extended roams, you've got castle setups, playmaking from Solus Pulse. Alamau had a great round on the Pulse, by the way. And then in the late round, you're relying on things like the Goyo, the Smoke, and the Azami setups to try and lock in your defense and try and whittle down the timer so the attack gets desperate. Yeah, Dev, you know, Virtue's up on the screen right now. Uh. <laughs> Virtue's ears were burning. You were hyping him up oh, yeah. on the top of the leaderboard right now. Which is not a place he's used to being. I mean, this is the second bottom rated player on G2 throughout the tournament and one of the oldest guys in the tournament at the age of 28. He's meant to be the leader, not the fragger. But every kill he got this game was impactful. One of the noises coming out of the G2 camp, and they keep consistently saying it to me, is Virtue is the best fragger in our team. Now, he's not on frag-oriented roles, so we don't necessarily see it in stats. But I also think he's one of the smartest 
smartest players in the team. It was just in the highlights package just then. And it was the first round of overtime, attacking the lockers. No attacking team had won it yet. And what does Virtue do? Takes the initiative in his own hand and he drops the server hatch and he manages to get a free piece. He gets the guy, that Foxe, that was covering the server stairs player, kills the server stairs player. But the third kill out of that was the most impressive for me, where he was waiting for the player to push through the site, anticipated it and killed the Azami as well. And what's more than that, Virtue is not just great at his role and fulfilling his smoke Hibana uh, prerequisites, but on top of that, yeah, he's top fragging. And he's got four opening kills and zero opening deaths. When you play an operator like the Hibana, when you're on that smoke roll, if you're the first one to die, that is a massive detriment to, the to, uh, to your entire team's chances of winning that round. So if you're getting into those opening engagements, you better hope you don't miss, and he doesn't. Okay, let's talk about map two. How are we feeling about this now? <laughs> oh, this is uh... hesitant to me. I mean, that was okay. a arm burner. It was a nail biter. It was. I mean, yeah. I feel great, Jackie, but I'm not in the server trying to fight for survival <laughs> for in a $3 million tournament. Right. And Oxygen are, and they have just lost their own map pick. To me, Jackie, that's actually really scary. Next up, I mean, we're going to Skyscraper, which is a fantastic map to G2. They're on a three-game winning streak. On the flip side, Oxygen have only played it once, and they ate seven. They got a 15-round narrow victory against Eminem. So this, to me, just feels G2-sided. Yeah, I would have to agree with this Gen genuinely. It's, like, it's not often that I will just quote stats straight off the bat, but if I look at G2's defenses, it's a 78% defense win rate for G2 in this tournament on this map. That is incredible. But backing that up, they're also hitting 50-50 on their attacks. So a 3-3 attack split as well as an absolute, you know, 5-1 pretty much as a usual defense split. They seem impenetrable on this map. It is their map choice for a reason. So I would have to back G2 because Skyscraper for the longest time was known as one of G2's ultimate favorite maps. And in contrast, on the Oxygen side, it's actually a 50-50 win rate on both yeah. sides. So you can clearly see that G2 have a little bit more going on their defense. And for me, Oxygen really need to be able to hack that, be able to, to make pace. We've talked a lot about operator bands. Now there are some massively powerful operators that can manipulate Skyscraper. When Thatch is in, it really can be a headache. When Kaid is in, it can be a headache. But to be honest, we're probably not going to be playing a game of War Denial. This is going to be about the Azami, right? Well, I think this is the really curious thing about how Skyscraper, just across this tournament, has played out, is either teams have gone for one of two for options. They've gone for the bands focused towards keeping walls open, which has been, you know, your bandits, your kaid. We've seen a lot of bandit kaid Thatcher bands when Skyscraper's been played. What that does is it allows the attackers to open walls and create pressure, but that holy trident is therefore back for the uh, defenders. Or you ban the Solace or the Azami or the Valkyrie, but then good, good luck getting any of the walls open. So <laughs> it's really curious to see the, which way these two teams are going to ban it out. Okay, we are ready for map two. I'll be honest, I think Dream is Sexy was my favorite chant. <laughs> OXG fans, what are you gonna give us now? Okay, some woos and yas. Okay, we'll take it. Happen and fluke, take it away. Thank you very much, Jackie. And yes, we are back and expecting a lot of noise in this room. OXG, let me just rephrase that, NA. You're one map away from leaving Invitational 2023. It's time to bring the noise. Yeah, that's, I think they can do better. Oh, you can definitely you can do, do better. better. NA, bring the noise. All right, that's way better, that's way better. I was going to say, it was a bit quiet the first time around. <laughs> Let's hope it's not Oxygen sleeping on these kind of calls as they get into the next. I do hear a lot of EU fans around as well, though, but we are getting underway for map number two, which is going to be Skyscraper. This is dangerous. This is a territory that G2 has been happy to play on and it's sort of that double-edged sword but both sides hurt because one side is G2 likes to play here and the other side is a lot of other teams don't. Yeah, that definitely does make it a double-edged sword for, uh, for, for Oxygen. Rather, like, the, the, the handle is also a sword. Everything is, so everything is just going to be hurting if you swing it or not. Valkyrie Band as well. We know that Valkyrie can be really strong on a map like this in terms of information. This last man comes in. It's Azami. Also a strong operator. It's kind of uh, funny to see how most of the operator bands on the defense really do come down to three operators. Yes. Solace, Azami, yes. Valkyrie, and uh -huh. Mira being a fourth. Yep. 
it shows how good they are. It shows that we're in an era of very powerful siege operators. Jackie's just getting uh, cheered on as she leaves the... She uh, just naturally gets cheered. She just naturally okay, celebrated. Um, yeah, unless obviously more and more of the uh, Team Rainbow are killed off. We're in a dangerous situation. Oh, no, don't remind me Thank of... Thank you, Universe I Team. I am you, uh, on stage now. Don't do this. Yeah, team. not that Harry was playable, but... Or Harry. I know that there's people from the CG Universe team that are in the room right now. Why? <laughs> Why did you... Sim simple question. Why? Anyway. Simple question. Can OXG pull it back? Give me an answer right now. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it's... it's, it's <laughs> I mean, G2 is, is favored on this map statistically. The only play that Oxygen have on this, I believe, was against um, M&M throughout this tournament, which means that there is a smaller sample size to go. G2, in the meantime, they've beaten DZ, Elevate, and Wolves. Consistent. All right, G2 leading in on that defense here. And to be honest, when we did see G2 on this map the other day, it didn't actually start super convincing. There was a couple of rounds when things weren't quite hitting the mark. They had a conversation. It's for me and my money when we started to see players really get into the series. You're looking at Byron and Blur, you're sort of looking at Virtue. And look at this, Doki, no! He was so close. He's buying himself a safe route out, but safety doesn't last very long when that's open as well. He was concerned he would be swung, but it was obviously being covered and watched by the back end. OXG, they didn't get the kill on the back of it, but they're also lucky to survive. Now, the house area has gotten a lot of attention from G2, a lot of long angles. Uh, there's going to be barbed wires. There's two or three players out there, which is going to be making it quite difficult for Oxygen to actually take control of that. Rather, it wastes a lot of your time. You're not even going to be certain if you're going to be able to get out of it what you want, and thus they decide to pull back. It's a rotation that's coming through. Now, normally what you do is you put a Thermite on that wall and you can open up onto uh, the drum as well. Now, that's no longer the case. It's going to be Selmas that open up and provide Oxygen a route into Geisha, which is currently still being watched, by the way, by Blur. Looking to go aggressive. I mean, he is a surgeon with the 9 mil. He's so happy to just play around space. Give him a long fight, give him a short fight. As long as you give him a fight, he's engaged. Emotion comes in underneath. You can hear the hot drones working. New is ready to catch the fight, but they're ready to fight back and has to pull himself slightly further out of bar before he finds the next fight, Doki. He's in an engagement, not of his own making or end there, and OXG, they get the first foot in the lead in. Doki came around the corner there, had no clue there was a player waiting for him, whilst it seemed like the information was there on Oxygen's side. And what we saw in the house area basically has been extended towards Karaoke and T. Lots of long angles to work with, which is going to be making it very awkward to play here as an attacker when you want to get that diffuser down. Relatively little safe space. Which means that Oxygen, they will really have to leverage their man advantage here, but the diffuser gets dropped by Benja. Instantly putting a pressure towards the Geisha balcony because they know there's still another player out there. Look at the time though, 30 seconds. They've got to try and put the pressure upwards. They are looking for an in, but it's just not being offered to them. They have to force the engagement. And at this point, it's either straight up the stairs with a pinch like this, vertical. He's on the back end. There's a player right in the middle, but he suffers from the cover. The rotate comes onto drum door to trade out with Alamal getting one alongside the fight. Benja swinging across two, and G2 seem to have a very good idea of just where everybody is. The break underneath, but pockets full of seconds. He can't even get to the diffuser in time, let alone the site in the first round as G2. Let alone up the stairs, just being pressured there by G2. And the G2 chants are coming through. And so does the chicken. Welcome back. Well, it might be a... Oh, it was the chicken. It was the chicken, yes. Oh, the chicken's made it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it was only a matter of time. It was only a matter of time before we saw that one. Here is the swing, the fight. So as I said at the time, they needed to force a fight. And this happened at the same time the other stairs fight happened. One was won, one was lost. This both had been lost. Suddenly, OXG's got an idea. But they still didn't have a huge amount of time. That's the worry. But first sight, first hold, first defense, first G2. As the follow-up, we head over to the other top floor side exhibition room on the far end. There's the sort of half opening. They bait in the engagement. But that little idea of let's give them a little bit of a sharper fight to the outside 
might be something that allows OXG to have an inroad. Hasn't been massively successful for G2. It's uh, a coin flip, whether or not they win this side every single time they've played it, which is a little bit worse compared to the average for the tournament, which is uh, 60%, which means that the teams they've been playing against have been able to dissect them their whole more consistently. And they were able to do that against other teams. The mirror windows are making an appearance here, which is going to be making it quite difficult to actually use a triple wall. Gonna have to go from below to try and take those out. It's a grenade! <laughs> and Doki just saw it coming and was able to step away in time. Still took some damage, but he lives. I mean, I didn't even know if he saw that coming and just realized that they weren't at that point. They catch the Selma. Very good use of the Kai Claws. And Alamau, he's gonna put it up high. They're trying to push against the Chancellor. But that's obviously the role is probably within radius, but the pocket EMPs are not. There's the Thatcher, there's Newers. Getting Benja underneath, getting some control, and it's a little bit more direct, a little bit more aggressive, a lot earlier on this time from OXG. Now, a lot of pressure coming in from below as he 4 gets popped. It's going to be making Sweater aware of the fact that some verticality could actually hurt him. Blur, falling back, fortifying his window. Of course, still has the mirror windows to play with. Oh, oh, oh. Suddenly just finds one below. Does he know about the player in Pantry? Oh. Seems to be the case of Newer's drop. Alamau as well. He was surrounded and he Alamau. fights his way out. Alamau has all of them. And he's still focused, still firing forward OXG. They thought they had a semblance of safety. They thought they had themselves kind of pieced together. And he ripped them right apart. At least the benefit is there's still some time. They can try and cook this. They can try and put the pressure. The Window means they've got to pull themselves a bit further back. They cannot just go for the straight engagement over Terrace. They cannot just swing Dragon. You're looking at such a deficit of bodies. It's going to have to be something a little bit more direct. And there's Alamau being as direct as he wants to be. A C4 still in pocket, but I think he wants them at the end of his gun. There's no utility to get rid of those mirror windows indeed, and that means Vertical's gone for a bit of a different approach. Spots ahead, but is unable to quite connect to it right away. Through the Dragon's feet. Dealing a little bit of damage. I believe a mirror window just has been popped by the defense. It's Dream that finds it down onto Doki, brings it back slightly. But no confirm yet. Are they aware? It's always that big question. And are they going to be able to go for a pickup? Well, they've rotated. They've got themselves much closer. As I said, it's got to be direct. Alamau. But there's direct. Alamau on a quad. Can he get the ace? The last fight is in Terrace. They're the next on his engagement list. And he's got an engagement with a final, but it's hurt you. Takes the last. I mean, Carl won in that, but if you got an ace, maybe Fabian would remember his name. <laughs> the, the audience wanted that as well. Like, Virtue gets that last <laughs> kill, people are like, oh. oh. But, I mean, it was the first. It was almost that thing, that, that breakdown of intel and information. And it's the toughest thing about Skyscraper is the way it's built. How it's structured, the shape of it means it's really awkward to get a true read on just where everybody is. People move, obviously, but they move in very small boxy rooms with a lot of corners and a lot of ways to tuck and cause damage. G2 have that knowledge. They're on their defense. They get to work around that, but they just seem comfortable. Predator, the hungriest sight of them all as they call a barbecue kitchen. And there is a clear name of the game brought by G2 here. Frost, Lesion, Capcan, also Thorn. In terms of the trap operators here are truly here to make sure that life is going to be living hell for Oxygen if they want to be even making their way into the building or the site. So drones are going to be very important here. They need to clear out all these traps because otherwise you're going to find yourself or oh, I don't want your foot stuck in a frost mat. You're going to get blown into pieces. Who will be the first to fall? The entry engagement hasn't been the biggest deciding factor between these two teams. It just seems, as I said, the follow-up. The trade game that comes on the back, if they can try and get one, maybe get two and get away, OXG might be in a much comfier place. Alamau hasn't died yet, isn't trying to make a habit of it, and has lent himself in with a huge opening couple of rounds. They're trying to hunt, though. They're trying to force the player to move out. You're looking at a little bit of an awkward sight here because you've got to get control, obviously, of prep and of pantry, and then you've got to maybe get the control above, or you can sort of do it vice versa. And to get that, well, you've got to control it, and it just goes on and on and on. 
Openings to be made. Gumine still coming out, and that's going to be making Pantry a little bit more secure. Just that first step, fall back, pull it out. Second step, again, stepping into it afterwards if they don't shoot them through. Newers was leaning in, but is uh, falling back just slightly. Oxygen are looking to rethink their approach here. Not quite having anything under full control, and you see it over the rooftop, just massive rotations coming through. It's going to be a, a drone sent in just to check if there's any free kill they can find, but nothing is being given to them by G2. And as they want to go for this top floor hold first, well, with just 90 seconds left on the clock, they need to be very quick with clearing this all out. This will just pop its way around, get the breach, and get the breach open. They can try and potentially impact it against if they were stacked for it, but otherwise they're not that interested. They're more than happy to let this wall fall. They have a bit of support behind it. They have some rotation, and they aren't going to utilize it. Instead of sort of trying to stick the point of karaoke and sort of try and stick the point of Geisha, let's peel back just a little, rotate underneath. We still have control, and they still only have a minute. This will just tuck its way. Ran on the opposite side behind the box, and there's Blur with the cross angle. There's Alamo with one more. Blur slips his way past Drum. And that echo once again of what do they know? Not enough. They cement the kill. Fox does get one back, but this G2 has had a lockout. Tactical timeout from Oxygen, and if you think about it, it is a right call. Three to zero. You've managed to get the opening kill twice, but twice G2 able to leverage it. Chicken. Chicken. Is that just what we're going to be calling uh, now every time you see that? <laughs> <laughs> just bringing it back to uh, opening kills, as you just mentioned it. G2 has gotten a total of 10 and translated eight of them into rounds. Whereas Oxygen, they have gotten a total of seven and translated four into rounds. So as you mentioned, it is not that every opening kill equals over towards a transition round. It is a bit more difficult than that. I mean, it's, it's confidence. It's confidence is key. It's a team that is so happy to be dancing the boardwalks on Skyscraper. Teamwork makes the dream work. That dream is the hammer right now. I mean, the dream is the hammer. It, it always is, and it's something that OXG, they're bitterly close to. They want to fight. They want to rematch with W7M. They want to be the reason that they have something to bring back here, but it has just been such a strong opening for G2, and it's not that the rounds have been specifically close as well. That's the big problem. That's the big key takeaway. Yeah, a total of five kills on Oxygen's side in these last three rounds. I hope you can all hear this at home. But the arena is becoming more and more G2 favored here. You say it's quite funny inside the arena. On the blue side, a lot of EU fans have generally gathered. And on the orange side, a lot of NA fans have generally gathered. If people just stay, they choose where their teams are sitting. They gravitate. They, on, they gravitate to where they are. And in the middle, you have fans of city. <laughs> people that just want people to have a good time. Three rounds, OXG. You can try and pull a couple of them back too, and you've still got yourself a lot on this map. But remember, this could be the only map. That's the big key moment right now, is they don't just need to put this map as a fight. They need to take it, and they need to try and tire a team out that at the minute is seemingly hitting a bit of a stride. And obviously, there's probably nothing more tiring than having to play a game against Astralis, who will run the Gambit and the Gauntlet with you until everybody is exhausted. It's just that exhaustion doesn't really seem to be a thing this tournament, because every single time a team has played a best of three before the second one, they seem to be getting away on top out of that. Doki smashes the Salmon before it can get themselves a proper rotate. They still have an angle but not a great one. You might be able to get a shot via repelling on the opposite end, but it's not going to be clean, it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be a bit noisy. So instead, draw on their way around, get the ping, see if they can put the pinch on the player. There's a bit of motion coming underneath Sweater. He wants to try and swing up house, but he needs a read, because Doki is otherwise unchecked, unpressured. There's the pop of the Goo Mine, there's the swing of the Doki, and there's the kill of the player. A great take built on the back of it. Benja, he's got the support line. He's making sure that there's cover and there's Blur on the back end. There's just always another G2 player. It's a similar kind of setup we have seen in the first time G2 was here, but this time it's working out better. They're not losing these opening engagements. They're not letting it back, uh, back down to a clutch. 
Foxy Dao does get quite close to be hitting a head twice there. Quickly tosses in that stun grenade so he or his teammates can move through. But it will take small amounts of damage as uh, Impact is being tossed in after. Just dodge, uh, dodges that. With a minute 20 left on that clock. Oxygen, you need to find yourself some security. You need to give yourself an opportunity to fight back and that's what Foxy does. I mean, it, it's the moment when that experience and that sort of history of the player comes together when things are slightly piling against them. Foxy takes a lot of damage. Doki still holding house stairs, and there's the swing. How he's been in this position the whole round. By doing things like that, Oxy have been unable to remove him. And Foxy cannot get the kill. The trade out, four in a row for G2. What does that say? My car was stolen today. Oh. <laughs> oh, I feel, I feel sorry now. Oh, no. I hope you'll get it back. There's Blur making those shots. I talked about it before as being the moment when I saw last time G2 on this map of forces sort of changing away. We saw a, a sort of resurgence. We saw G2 fight. The fact that they don't need that this time, the fact that they're sort of a little bit ahead of their own curve is a worry. And I like that. Little Doki scream again. I mean, they've, they've just had the tactical timeout on Oxygen as well, right? So yeah. if you don't bring it back now, G2 is just going to start running away towards that grand final tomorrow. You have to think how many kills in that previous round happened on the other side of the map as well. That's all, it, right? All of the engagements. It's all house area. It was around house. You're on exhibition. You're trying to fight the side that's not quite bringing it together, and it shows how tricky attacking this map is. Five seconds left. It does, especially when you're playing against a G2 on which every single player is feeling confident right now. And as the mirror windows are being set up for exhibition, we are seeing another identical hold to what we see in round number two. Back, back then it worked out. Will it work out now? I mean, we just saw it work for karaoke and they were actually doing better on their second attempt on the defense here. Normally it's the other way around. Normally the attack gets a little bit sharper if they attack the same thing twice. Newers, who has obviously had an unbelievable tournament so far. He's been a little bit shut out by Benjo, who's also had an unbelievable tournament, to be fair. That's always the worry with G2. You never really know which gun is going to be the hottest one on the day, and Alamau, this series, this showdown, a great play. Mirror window's gone. The driver, the twitch, the fight on the door, Dream. He's going to up not to repeak that. He peels oh. away. Pretty quickly, the Warriors Benja doesn't want to be chased. He puts down a slowdown and Doki! Hops out the Solis. A read and a destruction of Vertical. It's not the entry you want to have, but he just spotted a drone near the Black Stairs as well, so he's aware of the fact that there might be someone following up on him, or is he not? Because Sweater's about to be coming through towards the barbecue side. Pre-fires a little bit, doesn't hit anything. Doki, he's just stay spooked. Virtue as well, and uh, he's hiding in drones will drive by him. They have no clue he's there. And if he goes and spotted, well, that could be very problematic later on. The terrifying nature of Solus consistently showing up throughout this tournament and the many uses of an operator that is, you know, when it was added, we had questions. This SI, we've gotten so many answers. Do they know of Virtue? No. Not as much as he knew, they are ready for a fight back. They're either side, but look at the location here of Virtue. Look at who's around him and look at the time. There's a minute, they're trying to hunt the player inside the tea room. They're trying to force them out of the engagement. They're looking for something that's quite awkward because Virtue's not moving, he's not giving them anything. Still trying to hunt around the drum now. Impact's coming in from below. It's G2 letting them know, hey, we know you're here. We are coming to get you as Dream now focuses on the side itself. Alamau is going to try and put up some bit of pressure as well. Send some tracers down his way. Doesn't quite connect to Newers. Doesn't quite spot the head. Benja finds Foxe. Newers is being taken down. And Dream finds one kill. Needs to strike back with an ace clutch, but he will not succeed. Benja shuts him down. G2 5 to 0. Two more rounds and they find themselves at the grand finals. Five in a row, G2. And it has been one of their strongest moments and performances. 
This late in the day, the creativity is there, the confidence is there. G2 is here. And OXG have to try and pull one, have to try and pull something out of their attacking half, because otherwise it'll be a very long one on the defense. Just a slight little bit of extra hope is what OXG need right now, because it's still never over until it's over. As G2 kind of want it to be over. G2 want it to be over, but as you said, it's not over until it's over. But if you look at Oxygen, they haven't been able to hit the mark. Eight kills, five rounds. G2 is just filled with confidence right now. How do you stop that? How do you stop this, this confidence, this momentum that they currently have? You would say it starts with a round. It does. But you're going to need way more than that. It starts with a round, and at this point, it has to end with five it rounds. It ends to end with five rounds after that as well to put yourself on six. What are oh. you doing? I mean, it, I mean it, it, oh, they, no, oh, they know. Okay. Okay, good. OXG have to cement this kill. They have all the knowledge, all the idea. The drones come round, the player's there. Newers has the up to date yellow ping. The hop comes round. Oh, Alamo! Alamo wins it out, and sure, you get the trade. But that should have been a clean drop there with everything in their favor. And you can see the caution, you can see the concern in the motions of OXG. They have just lost the hold of G2 on their attack here on Skyscraper. The round has a lot of time and it's a four versus four. At least they had that trade. But you could have just chosen a safe way by tossing a grenade <laughs> in the tub and... <laughs> Like I would just keep see his camp for Because it's his second death of the whole map. That's it. But I mean, they're just so confident on G2 now, and they're starting to pull these kinds of tricks and still get away with at least a little victory. It's just scary. A scary team. And they're growing more and more into this tournament after their quick shutdown from Wolves in the upper bracket. They took revenge. And the lower bracket run so far seems like it might be completed and it would make it to the grand final, but there's still two more rounds they need to win for that. Are they gonna go flawless on their defense? We're about to find out in about a minute and 15, because Oxygen, while they're wasting some time, they still have a lot of ground to cover, and the majority of them are currently still looking to take that top floor in their own hands. And you might just be left out of time. That's it, this is what we talk about on this map, how much you gotta pay attention to, how much you gotta break your way through, and. What's been lost? The firefight again. Benja swings the double window and pulls a head away. They've now lost the rest of their hard breach. C4 is Benja's one more. And at this point, you wonder what can stop them. And if you're OXG, you hope it's the other half of this game. Sweater with the spray over. Hasn't been able to have a connection on this map as of yet. It would be the perfect time. But look at how they've got to take this. Fox A's underneath, 20 seconds left. There's two stories of separation, and it's all being worked. Virtue wins out, and there's a second. G2 push themselves onto map and series point, and they have six very long attempts to move themselves into the grand final. Talking facts now. What does Oxygen have left? After the first map went away from them and now they have faced a flawless half against them. One round and you will be placed third on the Six Invitational, an incredible feat. But they want more. Oxygen want more. Can they go get it? Because G2 is just overflowing with confidence right now. It seems like there is no stopping them. And we're headed to karaoke first. Is it the first out of six they need for comeback? Or is it ending here as G2 is looking to send them home? Ten seconds to go. It's a game of two offs. It's a game where there's chance here and obviously having to go flawless. 
on the biggest stage the game has to offer, this close to the final, okay, it's not easy. There's a lot of stress. And I can't imagine being the one that has to lead it in. Newers, he wants to try and get just a foot in on the round. Foxe, as I said, he's got experience and he's trying to step in. Looking for the rappel, looking for the bite on the player, but the attention's being paid directly underneath for now. It's still a chance of it happening. If he's gone unchecked, the calls come through. And the grenade underneath, it's a trade out. Doki and Vertical find each other. Benja can't get a connection and gets scraped just a little. Cannot find it, Sweater. Top to bottom, rocks Benja's world. And for the first time in a long time, OXG have a body advantage. In the past four or five rounds, they haven't been able to get that. Bomb located by attackers. Now they need to convert it, but Fox say drops. Alamau takes him down. He's playing with that DMR on the window. The question mark comes through. Oh no. That might be a tilting factor G2. They have what they need. They're opening up the wall. There is still a bulletproof cam that will give away the game. Cannot do anything about it yet. But Blur has that talent shield. Virtue is going to be giving the cover. <laughs> They set themselves up. They now have this a bastion of defense and a smoke to push them back and buy some time, but it's precious seconds. Alamau watching from far away, and maybe the question mark was he opened that window and got a kill on the back end of it. I'd be confused too, but I'd be sad if I was on the other side. Hits damage into Sweater. The pool, the ping, they have to force themselves back, which will buy a blur, a little bit of movement. They're letting the top of black stairs become dangerous, so another canister comes across. But that one goes directly to the plant spot. They might not know that that ground hasn't been taken, and it's an early play and a ploy on it. Alamau has to rotate closer, though. It is still a three versus three, and there's very little you can do on just that window alone. It is. But as more smokes are being tossed in, and the talent shield soon could come into play from Blur. The utility that is left in Oxygen's pocket is slowly being taken down. There is a player below. It is going to be Alamau. He's going to start and see if he can push the main stairs. If he finds that kill, it opens it up for G2. And he does! Is it a double? No, he gets shut down. But it gives the moment for Blur to start to push in and see if he can plant. They're going deep on the side. It's Blur. He's able to get one more and lock it out. It's the two versus two virtue. He's on the slow creep on the back, and it's a two versus one. Newers, the young prodigy, the Venom has to go phenomenal if they want to stay in this fight and stay in SI 2023. The swing on gold, he's round the back, they know. The post plant and the rotate round, he's trying to isolate one of these engagements. Sees a sliver of health, sees a sliver of a body, but G2 have kept themselves cards close to the chest. They're on either side of the door in a line, but that is all! build on a combination of some of the old and some of the new. But the only thing coming to this showdown was G2. G2 played four maps today. They dispatched off the last two North American teams. And that makes it now only two. W7M and G2 will be your grand finalists for tomorrow. One of them will lift the hammer. Not the way it could have gone, but you've got to remember how we got here. A long, long road of the most intense siege any of the players on our stage will play, and it's heartbreak. But it's also the important fact that it takes so much skill to get to this point and this stage, and only two can make it. Only two teams can fight and only one of them will walk away with it. But for now, we have ourselves those two teams. Again, G2 will be taking on W7M. Will Fabian lift it for the third <laughs> or Julio for the second time? That's going to be one of those big questions we will see answered tomorrow, but what we do know is that G2, they have fixed a lot of their issues today that we've seen over the rest of the tournament. And tomorrow is going to be a hell of a game. <laughs>
And you can see the fans following with the camera. Nicely done. <laughs> if you shy away from the camera, it will stay on you. Hey, Sam Stokes. Hey! hey! <laughs> the working heartbeat scan are terrifying. I see a couple of devs there. Everyone here celebrating, but I mean, it is just a terrifying performance. And you have to be terrifying because you know what you're up against. And that's the thing, is for all the heat, all the attention, unfortunately, we still have to call Fabian entirely undefeated against NA, which I know he's going to love. And it won't change today. And it either. won't change until the next tournament. Someone has to fight W7M. And someone has to be ready to fight W7M. Well, G, to be ready, that's the big question because we mentioned it before. It's W7M's tournament to lose. But by the way, G2 played over this series now, over the series earlier, and especially that last map of Sky we just had. It is going to be, again, a historic matchup. I like them cheering for Wolves. I just heard the Woos coming in the back. Sadly, they are no longer here. But EU's hope is still. Now, as we wait, people back at home are going to start theory crafting. Is it going to be G2? Is it going to be W7M? Who is going to be taking this away tomorrow? I mean, now, now's the time. Now's the time. Put your word where your sort of money is to put everything down. However, I think we're close to having enough of our word. In just a moment, we'll be getting some, some sweet tones. In fact, let's wait no longer as we throw it to the one and only Ian Chambers. Emmy, Hap, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for G2! What a run it was for Oxygen. Unfortunately, they drop out of the tournament here, but it is G2. Alamo as well, you will be in the grand final against W7M. This is pretty much in touching distance. Yeah, uh, it's really excited uh, that we are here right now. Like, uh, I knew we were a great team, but I was not expecting a grand final with one month with Benja, a new player. So I'm really excited to play the final tomorrow. Well, you mentioned his name there, Benja, your new player, and what a player he's been. Yeah. Uh, probably the best player I ever played with. He is literally amazing. High praise um, from yourself. And, and Doki said the same. You know, he wasn't expecting to be here. This has been quite a turnaround for G2. So many, you know, influences that have played a part in what has made you a better team, um, arguably, at this Invitational. But you've made one hell of a lower bracket run that showed no sign of stopping. And now you've made it into the grand final. Are you exhausted? No. Job's not done. Job's not done. You're still fired up. Two best of three wins in one day. And now you've got an evening to reflect, to rest up. What is it you'll be doing in the next several hours to prepare for W7M? Uh, I'll be studying them. I expect uh, a normal game because on group stages was quite, uh, quite easy to understand them and reading them. So I think we can beat the, the final boss. You know the players in W7M. You've played against them. You know how good they are. How much of a threat are they? I mean, look, it doesn't get it doesn't get harder than a grand final of SI, but this team in particular have been on an absolute trailblazing run of form. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to beat them, uh, to play against them, because I wanted to beat them on the final. Do you um, have any part of your mind? Because Fabian is staying well and truly in the background. He doesn't want to get too involved. He wants it to be all about the players. But is there any part of you that wants to help him raise his third hammer? Yeah, I said this to him. Uh, like right now, I want to win the hammer just for him to give it his third hammer. And so he will become the GOAT. Amazing. All right, so I want to give you the opportunity to say thank you to your fans before I let you go. Uh, thank you for my fans, everyone who's supporting us, guys. Thank you very much. I love you guys. Uh, also for my, my family and, and friends who are in my home. I'm also playing for them. Uh, and especially for the haters, because there's a lot of them. <laughs> Kyle, before I let you go, last thing. You're being very modest and humble here, and I know that you can get very loud. Just an opportunity, W7M will be watching right now. Is there anything you want to say to them? 
Be ready. Give it up for Alamal and G2, your SI 2023 grand finalists. So there you have it. We know exactly where we're going. We know the lay of the land on Sunday for the grand final. We've got one more analyst desk here this evening to wrap things up and talk through what we just saw, but this is shaping up to be an electric Sunday that you do not want to miss. Am I right or am I right, Jackie? Oh my gosh, so right. Are you ready? That gave me chills. G2 going to the grand final. Oh my gosh, what a journey it has been. But real talk, that map, what just happened? Like, what just happened for real? They allowed, <laughs> I, I don't know. Speechless. Oxygen allowed skyscraper through. Oxygen allowed skyscraper through. I don't know what happened. That it was does step make, one. Right? It does make you wonder. Step two is then picking to start on the attacking yes, side. Yes, exactly. Makes you wonder. Makes you wonder. What I a mean, game. You had some wild numbers for me. You're just like, Look, Jackie, how did this go down? I mean, I'm sure that everyone studying G2 would have seen the stat that you said earlier, 78% defense win rates so far in the tournament on Skyscraper. You don't want to start attacking G2's Skyscraper. And we saw exactly why. What a dominant showing. Every single one of these incredibly talented players was firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I mean, fresh G2 dominating today, 2-2-0s. Two, two Fabian was just chuckling back there. I don't know, every time he came up on camera, I was just like, oh, he is so amused right now. I think one of the things about Fabian is generally his coaching style with this set of players hasn't been uh, equivalent of his IGLing style when he was a player. It's been very much a soft approach with his players, being, you know, their friend, leading them by kind of experience, just giving them tips here and there. Obviously, he's brought in an analyst to help him with the kind of analytical side of the support staff role as well. He had his moments during this tournament where he has had to shout at them, where he has had to say publicly, I have been disappointed in your performance. But then when it all comes together, he does look like one happy man back there as a coach. I've got no doubt about it. Uh, I've. Honestly, I've been very interested in how Fabian's impact is felt within the team. This is a guy who has raised the hammer twice before and been at the height of Rainbow Six in a dynasty that has never been mirrored since the age of Penta and G2. And now, I mean, talking to him the other night, he was saying he still believes if he got in the server and practice, he could play just as good as anyone. <laughs> and yeah, that sounds like big words, but this means that he has such a high standard from his players and he expects nothing less than 110%, 100% of the time. All right, W7M, though, we got to talk about this. An absolute force. G2 coming in hot right now, though, Fresh. This lineup is out of control. Yeah, I think so. I think G2, you know, they played, actually, W7M all the way back into groups. And I think if you look at how G2 played W7M, I think they got the banning phase right. I think they got the execution, maybe a little bit of nerves, all the way back in groups wrong. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very close game. So they know what they're going to be coming up against. W7M know what they're going to be coming up against. It's all set itself up for a, a, an absolutely explosive final tomorrow because it was three tight games in groups, three tight maps in groups. We're going to get at least five, or well, not at least five, we're going to get essentially five tomorrow. Let's not forget, this is a very different G2 week that stands before us today than the one that we saw in the group stage. These guys have found their form. And while, as uh, Alamau said in the interview, he thinks that W7M have a more predictable play style, G2 are a global cocktail from Australia, Scotland, England, Brazil, and Denmark, and of course, Fabian from Sweden coaching them. There is stories that could be told for years about the origins and the histories of these players and the records that will be set. And I can't wait to get stuck into it tomorrow. I, I got goosebumps right now. <laughs> I know, you know what else gave me goosebumps? That's 7-0 up on the big screen there. I do want to talk about Oxygen a little bit. Newers struggled today for sure, Fresh. I think so. The, you know, the consistency he showed throughout this tournament should not be, you know, it should be appreciated. He has been excellent throughout the whole tournament as Newers. Sure, he had a bad day today and bad days happen. But on the whole, he's had an excellent tournament. Oxygen have had an excellent tournament. And I think we would have been saying the same things about any team that lost and went out at this stage, because I think three of the four teams were not even expected to be at this stage. So overall, take a step back, 
It's been a great tournament for Oxygen. It's been a great tournament for Newers. It has, and I expect great things from Oxygen in the future. I'll also like to add that while they might not have had their hottest day ever, it's not like one player bombed out, therefore the team lost. You know, Sweater had a tough one, so did Newers, but neither of them are doing absolutely terribly. Statistically, they're still putting up numbers. They're still taking the fight to G2. At the end of the day, I think one of these teams had championship material at this point in time, and one of them did not. And that's why, of course, we have G2 in the grand final. And it's been such a journey for G2. Real talk, after 2019, Got a little bit stale for them, Dev. Oh, I love looking at this so much. I'm a nostalgic Those man, Jackie. Exes. Oof. I remember looking back to at the very point when G2 entered Rainbow Six, picking up the Penta roster after they had become World Championships just before the Paris Major to go on and have the most dominant major final victory in history at the Paris Major. And of course, 2019 was the iconic win over Empire here in Plus Bell in Montreal. Since then, of course, they are yet to find another championship. And I, Jack, believe it can happen tomorrow. There are a lot of things that have to come together to create a title winning team. So I'm not saying this is just on him, but Fabian joined right after the Berlin Major. <laughs> Fabian joined back as coach right, well, it was actually just before, but we'll, we'll, Shas was still there, the Berlin Major. Fabian joined for stage three, 2022, and has taken them to the SI final in the start of 2023. That plus a whole host of other reasons, incredible. And we could be making that a championship on that graphic again tomorrow. Yeah, and you know what else changed after the Berlin Major? There's one guy called Benja. And uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some correlation between G2's success and having a phenomenal Danish player on their team. Um, Benja, but Alamal, you know, that's our MVP. And th thrilling interview, cool as a cucumber. Am I wrong, Fresh? No, you're not wrong at all. I think, you know, he deserves all the plaudits he's about to get and that he has got. I think, you know, he was signed as a star player as this guy that brought this new brand of exciting Brazilian siege to G2. And he's, uh, and I'll keep saying it again, he had to wait his turn behind Prano as an IGL, behind Citizen as an IGL. He's the IGL of this team, but he plays it from a role that is more of a flex role. It's not a hard spot role. He's got Blair for that. He's got Virtue for that. It means he can get in amongst it. It means he can make these very instant, very fast shot calls. And genuinely, the improvement on him that I'm hearing out of the G2 camp, when I speak to G2, it's not just the improvement on him as a player, but more so the improvement on him as a person and as a leader within this squad has been absolutely phenomenal. And let's not forget that on top of being a phenomenal player, Alamal has an amazing story behind him. We've seen miracle runs from this guy before. You remember 2021, <laughs> the Mexico Major, the only time in Rainbow Six history we've yep. ever had to settle a group's tiebreak with a rematch. It was Team One, Alamal leading the front, took down Cyclops on the rematch and went through to do despite all expectation, take the Mexico Major Championship. He earned Rookie of the Year for that performance. And now he's the only team, the only player on G2 who is a major champion. And we're, we're talking about him as if he's an absolute veteran. In 2021, what, a year and a half he ago, a rookie. he was the rookie. And that is genuinely, you know, the story of G2. They realistically rocking into this tournament with what one, you could argue veteran in virtue, that's been to multiple SIs. Yeah. You know, the rest of this team is more or less up and comers. You know, it, it feels weird calling Doki and whatever, <laughs> but it's all young players. It's all inexperienced players, especially on this stage. Well, even for Doki, for example, he's been around for a long time, but he hasn't had the experience on the big stage like Virtue has. If you think back to Tokaname, which would have been Doki's debut at the time, he was unfortunately forced to sit on the bench yeah. and watch his team take a championship without him. He might be able to find his first tomorrow against W7M. I want to dig into G2 versus W7M more. These are two Titan teams going head to head. Fresher to see you nodding there. It's like, I have no idea what to anticipate for tomorrow. Explosiveness, it really is. Oh, I, think, love it. I think for G2, I talked about them being this balanced team where they can do one thing, they can do another. They can play a forward line in a very ag uh, aggressive style. They can play a back line, a delay kind of repay tactic. I think they can do both, and they're going to have to flick between this, maybe even between rounds against W7M, because W7M are going to be that dynamic on their attacks, on their defenses. 
G2 are going to have to be on point tomorrow, reading into everything W7M are doing because they just are that good. Yeah, and if you want to talk about the grudge match between the two, G2 has never defeated W7M in history. They played in the group stage. Of course, it was a very tight one, but W7M did take the 2-1. And previously at the Charlotte Major, right at the start of the year, what a very different G2 we had, and a quite different W7M we had as well. And of course, uh, now G2 have made their way through the lower bracket. They were, in fact, the Grim Reapers after all. <laughs> yeah, we need to create a new meme for this one. And, and genuinely, the, the Perseverance is like, and I will keep saying this, they dropped out, they picked Wolves, and they got their tongues burnt by picking Wolves. <laughs> they got their asses handed to them that day. And then they drop into the lower bracket, and they look like they're going out against FaZe. And I'll say it, that five-minute timeout kept them in that tournament that day. And they've kept winning, kept winning, kept winning, kept winning, and all the way into the grand final. That is impressive stuff because normally we would expect a team that drops in from, you know, the, the upper bracket final, the upper bracket semi-finals to make the run. G2 was in the very first round of the lower bracket after playing an upper bracket yeah. game and has done the run all the way through. Early predictions? <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to say it straight up. Everyone is okay. thinking it. W7M are the tournament favorites. They yes. always had been. Maybe you could have made an argument BDS were up there. But, yeah. uh, well, yeah. once again, a disappointing SI for them. W7M going through the upper bracket. There is no doubt that they are the team everyone is expecting great things from. I think so, too. I think W7M, there's no last time team to knock them out of it too big a map pool. There is, they have absolutely everything and therefore would be tournament favorites for me. All right, well, let's talk about the schedule. The siege action is far from over. Before the grand final, we got a couple events. Today, you got the year eight season one reveal panel. Tomorrow, you get the whole roadmap. Do not miss the dev panel at 2 p.m. Then we have the grand final ceremony starting at 3.15 Eastern, followed by the grand final at 5.15. See you there. Oh my goodness, y'all will be on the tri desk tomorrow. Excited about that? I am excited. Look, one of my favorite things about today has been the opportunity to work with you guys, especially you, Jack. It's uh, been a very you. long time, man. Yeah, it's been but a year, James. Tomorrow I get an upgrade. I get Jesse as well. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, well, it's uh, time for me to say goodbye. Um, I'm a little emotional, not gonna lie. So Siege was my first eSport ever. And I told y'all at the beginning of the show that I was sitting right over there. And I was like, maybe someday I can be on stage here. I'm sorry, I'm like starting to get emotional <laughs> already. And um, it's, <laughs> it's an absolute honor working with both of you. You're two of my favorite people, period. And I just want to say to the Siege community, you have no idea how much you mean to me and you will always have my heart. And I'll see you later. <laughs>